City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, the 10th of September 2019. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who may be with us today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Members, will you be seated? Have so much fun with this chair. Members, we have no apologies of leaves of absence tonight, so that takes us to item number four, which is the confirmation of the minutes from the 27th of August uh, 2019. Uh, could I actually have someone take the minutes as read? Thank you, Councillor Martin, seconded. Uh, Councillor Sims. Members, are there any changes to the minutes? Comments? If not, uh, can we uh, please vote? Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Uh, we have no deputations this evening, nor any petitions. So that takes us to um, item number seven on the agenda, which are the recommendations of committee. Uh, the first recommendation uh, is the strategic property matter, 7.1. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I seek to uh, move a variation. I have circulated it around. Uh, so number two remains as is. Number one, uh, replace the existing text with request that administration advises the proponent of the Adelaide Football Club that their proposal will not be considered until the completion of a needs analysis to ascertain the City of Adelaide's current and future demand for aquatic and recreational services and a draft communication and engagement plan. I'll seek a second. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, uh, this um, motion really clarifies um, to the Adelaide Football Club that um, we will not be uh, considering anything that they put forward until we have undertaken the needs analysis work. We had considerable discussion around this um, at committee just last week. Um, one of my concerns around our existing approach is that we're potentially putting the cart before the horse. We're wanting to have discussions with a third party when we haven't even worked out what we want um, from any potential collaboration. And so first step is to do the needs analysis get a sense of what the community wants from any uh, collaboration, and then um, we are in a position to consider something from the third party. Now, of course, Lord Mayor, the Crows may well wish to progress this uh, offline, but ultimately um, we are pausing our own process and waiting until um, we get uh, the needs analysis work done before we consider any um, submission from them. So, you know, this is, I think, a, a good way of um, responding to concern that's been expressed in the community around this process um, and ensuring that we don't uh, put the cart before the horse um, and that we have a discussion in a way that is um, responsive to the needs of the community. We need to know what they want um, and we also need to know what the current need is in terms of public pool and um, recreational services. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Moran? I'll reserve my right to the Mayor. Members? Deputy Lord Mayor? Thank 
you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I'll, I'll rise to speak um, against this change and I'll, I'll list my reasons to why. Uh, we have currently an unsolicited bid process that is underway, which is clearly prescribing uh, what the guiding principles and the intent of council is to the market. Uh, we haven't yet received a formal response uh, to that um, submission at this stage to council. Um, and my uh, what I would like to see happen is not pause the process. And this is the intention of this motion. We have seen previously at this council, other motions brought in of sort of similar nature, I guess in the sense, uh, it's all providing to go out to a public consultation process on a concept where we don't have a concept, we don't have a formal submission that's been put to council. Uh, my take on this clearly would be for council to wait to see if they do receive a formal submission. So I don't want the unsolicited bid process to stop. That's not the intention. They can still continue with what they're designing in line with the guiding principles of council and bring that back to council when they are ready. In the meanwhile, our administration will go down the path of looking at the, um, <coughs> of the needs analysis and assessing that. Once we have that in place, with a formal response, we will go out to a public consultation process. And after that, it would be the council's decision uh, to be able to provide the feedback back to the Adelaide Football Club if council wishes to do so. And via that submission, we'll be able to affect any needs analysis we want to see uh, as part of that submission and part of that report. I don't want us to put a message out to the market right now uh, that we are completely pausing the unsolicited bid process. And my fear in this motion, unless Councillor Sims is prepared to say otherwise, his intention, his intention is to pause the process completely, go out to the market and to the community to say that the process has been paused. Uh, and then after that, um, when we receive the needs analysis, we will restart the process. I think the process has already started uh, as per the um, unsolicited bid process, and that process has its own lungs and its own legs, and it should keep going until they are ready to have a formal submission put to council. And again, once that formal submission has been put to council, we will have the needs analysis ready. And if it's not ready, we will make sure we wait for it until it's ready. And then we'll also go out to public consultation with a formal submission with need analysis and with both combined we'll be able to tell the Adelaide Football Club exactly what we would like to see change or amended uh, in their application if they choose to pull one. Uh, we're still yet to see any formal representation put to this council from the Adelaide Football Club as part of the unsolicited bid process. So look, I've asked members to be very cautious. I think it's important that we don't put a message out to the market that we stop the process or pause the process because we shouldn't be doing that. The, the process is on the way and should continue until otherwise notified. Councillor Sims, you had your hand up, but I can accept a question. Well, I actually just wanted to clarify the factually correct uh, comment. Um, maybe I could do that and then ask a question. That'd be acceptable. Okay. I just wanted to clarify, um, Councillor Abiat keeps referencing a suspension of the process. The wording of the motion makes it very clear that it's actually council um, delaying consideration of any, um, or we will, will not consider any proposal um, until um, we've done our own needs analysis. It doesn't use the uh, term suspending the process. So I just want to make that clear to Councillor Abbott. But I do have a quick question for administration. Okay. Could, could administration advise whether they've had any discussions with the Adelaide Crows after the um, committee meeting we had last week? CEO. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor, following the committee meeting last week, I did meet with representatives of the Adelaide Football Club. Uh, I did explain to them uh, the view that the needs analysis was a critical piece of information and that ideally um, that information resulting from the needs analysis would be uh, need to be used to populate um, the concept plans that they are preparing. So I have had that conversation. Thank you. Councillor Kieran. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm compelled to speak uh, against this uh, amendment, uh, proposed amendment as well. Uh, look, um, I've got every faith in the unsolicited bid proposal. Uh, it, there is no suggestion that there will be a response uh, to the Crows until after a needs analysis uh, is undertaken and until after uh, the Chamber has the benefit of assessing uh, the needs analysis. Um, so I think that this is uh, really what this is, is, is something of an insult uh, to members. The idea that we can't 
uh, that we effectively, and it's, it's almost amusing, it's not so much a gag motion as a, a blindfold uh, motion, Lord Mayor. We've got to sort of blindfold ourselves and we know we can't look at that because we lack the capacity uh, to, to, we lack the capacity to take, keep in mind that there is a needs analysis um, that will be fully and thoroughly uh, um, canvassed and taken heed of. So uh, for that reason, I think that we are delegated to uh, to follow a process. I see no reason to support this. It is something of an insult to the members' uh, intelligence. Thanks. Councillor Moran. Uh, as usual with Councillor Kerr's debate, I, I scratched my head how a motion that actually we all agreed to in the committee that we really needed to wait, I think uh, Councillor Canole enunciated best, that if we have indeed asked for a needs analysis, which is basically what we are asking the Crows to supply to us, why would we wait till that was done? If I if could just correct that, sorry, Councillor. Just to be clear, we're not asking the Adelaide Football Club to prepare the needs analysis. The needs analysis is being prepared entirely by no, council. I didn't say that. I said, uh, why would we ask them to wait till we had done our needs analysis before they formulated the plan for their own for their own information? And I listened to members there. It is neither insulting, and I, I really struggle to see where that comes from. This is a very dangerous process, and I suspect that um, it has been decided not to vote for this, which is, is puzzling. Um, I think I would cancel the needs analysis then. Um, we've been running the pool for a long time. We should better knock up something pretty quickly. We know what the needs are. Um, if that's in December, we've told the, the, the snail pace that the administration works to, um, it's, it's a waste of time bringing it then. Just cancel it, save our money. Um, I moved a motion some years ago that we could no longer manage the aquatic centre, and as some line, that's been a, a drum that I've been banging for a long time. I asked the administration then to go out to the marketplace and look for somebody that would manage um, our aquatic centre. They approached many non-for-profit organisations as it was an ageing facility and was losing money. We didn't obviously get too much interest. But we did notice that the, the um, Adelaide Football Club was looking for new rooms and wanted to leave West Lakes. So I moved a motion that we approached them. We approached the Crows, not the other way around. They expressed some interest, then it died down and it didn't, it didn't come back again. Then when we, as you new councillors know, we get a, um, a thing on our agenda asking for um, how motions have progressed. I noticed that my motion hadn't progressed, so I moved it again. Have we approached the Crows? And what was their answer? This is not an unsolicited bid. Even if it was not as the way I've told you, it is not unique. There are many other football clubs. Have we approached them? No, we have not. But this is not an unsolicited bid. To hide behind this process is ridiculous. This CEO brought in the unsolicited bid process, which was quite a sensible thing to do, but this was not one of them. We solicited this bid to manage the existing aquatic centre. You are being fed a lot of rubbish and you are digging yourself deeper by politically voting on this. This needs to come out of secrecy. We do have a concept plan. All of us here looked at plans. If I could have another minute. Members. Um, members. Uh, we've all seen a concept plan, and I tell you what, there is a rule in local government that if you think the greater good is served and a confidentiality order is inappropriately put on, it is your duty as a councillor to give that to the public. And I tell you, within four weeks, I will do exactly that unless this council comes to its senses and tells the public who owns the land exactly what the Crows have given us. There is a plan. There's a very clear plan. And we know it, but we can't tell the people that own it. The secrecy here is ridiculous. As Sam said, urges us caution. Very sensible. This is cautious. What you're doing is not cautious. I am washing my hands of this process now. I will not be voting on it, and I not, will not be participating in it unless you start behaving sensibly. This is a dangerous road you, road you hoe. I suspect it's illegal, and I, I, I don't want to have any part of it. Point of clarification, CEO? Well, three of me. I just think it needs to be really clearly stated that we do not have, have not received 
an official proposal. At this time, we have nothing to consult on and we are yet to receive a formal proposition. That is what the discussion is. Um, we need to undertake our needs analysis. Once we've done that... Uh, sorry, look, I, I really don't accept the CEO entering the debate. We have received a concept plan. Sorry, that we have all it, Councillor. And I don't want the CEO constantly entering... Councillor, we have not received a formal proposal. We, we have seen a concept plan. Correct. Thank you. That's all I said. Correct. And I'd rather the administration stay out of Thank the Thank you, Councillor. Um, can I also remind members that when there is a decision of council around confidentiality, the expectation is that all councillors will abide by the confidentiality that is voted on by this council. I'll go to Councillor Hyde. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for that clarification of confidentiality, Lord Mayor. Of course, people come into this chamber and talk about what's legal and what's not legal. Of course, that is what is illegal, is if councillors were to breach confidentiality um, around around something this councillor said it should remain in confidence. Um, of course, it's it's refreshing, Lord Mayor, to have councillors come into this chamber talking about the needs analysis because, of course, uh, up until a few days ago, I was the only councillor that was on the public record talking about the needs analysis. Um, councillors, please. Uh, it, it, it is a shame, though, of course, that it's brought in in this manner, in a Machiavellian way, uh, which is, of course, designed to stall the process. Um, Councillors, please. Because ultimately, ultimately, some wish to, to kill this process uh, entirely. Um, uh, and, and with that, I don't have the guiding principles in front of me, but um, I suspect that this motion may be uh, redundant in its, uh, well, this variation may be redundant. Um, could administration just remind me, in the guiding principles, what do we reference as far as the needs analysis? Would you be able to refresh us? Tom, do you, can you help us with this answer, please? Through you, Lord Mayor, the guiding principles talk to similar services and also catering to the existing needs of, of the centre. Right, and so it, it logically follows that we actually won't be considering a proposal until we know what those needs are um, and what we need to cater to. So I would say this variation is just redundant in its entirety. It's just designed to block the process, um, and I would encourage councillors to vote it down. Members, sorry, Councillor Martin. I'm just puzzled by this. No. Most of these guys haven't been here for very long, but I, I can't remember a meeting of council where people have sat there and told untruths. Yeah. We know exactly what the, clo the crows are planning. We have seen drawings. Yeah. I can tell you, I can tell everyone here exactly what's in there, and you sit there and say we don't have any formal proposal. It is merely mouthed. We have, we have the detail. We are hiding it. We are hiding it from our ratepayers, from the people of South Australia, and what's more, your predecessor, Business SA, every other reputable group in this state is saying, stop it, stop playing these silly games, put it out actually, in the public. Councillor Martin, government. as a point of clarification, my predecessor has not said that. He yes, actually he posted a tweet in May saying, look at our glorious parklands. And they have put that together with another story. Oh, come on. Oh, Councillor well, uh, Moran. Lord, Lord Mayor, I do understand that um, you often claim that the press misrepresents you. But this, this is a serious matter. This is misleading our rate pay. And this. Councillor this Moran, is... could, we, could I please hear Councillor Martin speak? Well, Lord Mayor, you keep interrupting me. I, I'm having difficulty completing what I wanted to say, and I understand why you want to disrupt me. But let me tell you, it is the cart before the horse to put that needs analysis after the crows have completed their plans. How, how are they supposed to know what it is that people want? Do they want four lanes in a swimming pool, two lanes in a swimming pool, a paddle pool, a rubber ducky? Who knows? This would inform the plan that comes to us, which is already half formed. The only thing it lacks is detail of what's in there. We know the dimensions, we know how high it is, we know precisely where it sits on the parklands. And you guys sit here saying, we have no concept plan. We don't know what it looks like. Lord Mayor, this council is dysfunctional. Members, Councillor Knorr. 
Uh, just a couple of words towards uh, the conversation, as interesting as it is. Um, uh, my personal view, rather than having someone else put something in my mouth, which has an unsavory flavor about it, but, um, sorry, uh, but my point of view is that we're in control of this and not someone else. And so therefore my view is that uh, by us uh, wanting a needs analysis, and that that's part of the process, that is what we are intended to do. And without that needs analysis, we, the people who are in control of this uh, uh, in the process, won't uh, look at anything further. What someone, another party does with their own time, their own money, their own staff, whatever, that's their thing, and they can do whatever they like. We can all make plans. I know a number of councillors that make plans each week about how they're going to run things. But um, this is very much, let us, let us uh, allow people to do what they wish, because it effect, doesn't affect us. When it does affect us, then let us have a conversation about it. When someone can give me, and again, we always talk about verbal as against as paper, as in documents. I mean, paper and, and uh, uh, these days electronic documents, they are what we all go by because that is what's verifiable. We can have a conversation about all sorts of wonderful things, but that doesn't uh, create fact. So here we are. All we need to do is that the original motion is quite acceptable. We are not, the people in control are not going to put forward uh, any proposals or accept any proposals until we know what our, what our constituents want and what the actual rate pays and users want with this space and it's in question. So once we have that, that I would have expected would inform the proponents with uh, how they wish to go about things and they can they can do that. And if it fulfills roles, then we can make decisions on that. But that's at the time we do that. And until then, uh, this vilification of, of individuals and groups and, 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 uh, and sporting clubs, uh, you know, this is unnecessary. And let us let them do that. Let us not yet try to influence our constituents with things that aren't real yet. And let us then inform them so that they can make a decision too. We just spent a process uh, today discussing that uh, about how we can uh, talk with our constituents and do consultation. That comes with facts. This is still fiction, so leave it at that. And let us just uh, move on. Councillor Donovan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I have no idea why this is so contentious and why we all need to get up and talk about this, but I feel the need simply to add, we seem to be in furious agreement that we are all agree that we need to do a needs analysis and that no decision will come until that needs analysis is done. So in our furious agreement, this amendment simply clarifies the agreement that we have all stated we will come to. So I have no idea why this is so contentious because this is simply a clarification of the process that we are all in agreement that we will go through. So I would suggest that we support the amendment simply for the point of clarification. Councillor Kouros. My only concern in regards to all this is that we have an unsolicited bid in process. So we have all agreed, and we've agreed on the 5th of March, I think it was, that we agreed for this to go through as an unsolicited bid. If we start changing and swapping, changing things during an unsolicited bid process, who are we as a council? We've got to appear strong and to our word that we say to people out there that as a council, you are welcome to put in an unsolicited bid. If we go ahead and start changing things in between halfway through this, then we are sending a clear message to the public that we're not serious about what we do. We haven't agreed to anything. We're given concept drawings. We are going to do a needs analysis because that is what we all agreed as a council. We're going ahead and going, going to consult with the community. We're going to do all that. That is going to happen. But I don't like Swap and changing what this unsolicited process means. We agreed as a council to go down this road. If you didn't want to go down this road, you should have done this from the beginning. Didn't want to go down that road. <laughs> Members, I will go. Oh, sorry, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm really puzzled by this um, debate, to be honest, really, really baffled, because I thought when we uh, discussed this at committee last week, there was a consensus view forming at committee. Um, I uh, went away, I consulted with my colleagues and told them that I was going to bring something forward. I sought advice from administration. I met with them. I presented a version that was quite different to this and worked through some of the issues in conversation with them to come up with something that I thought was a sensible compromise. 
So, um, and one that actually reflects largely what this council is doing. The benefit of this motion is it sends a clear message to the community that this is the approach that we're taking and to the Crows to explain that we're going to be waiting on the needs analysis. So I cannot understand what the opposition to this is based on. I can only assume it is some sort of uh, factual political play designed to design to um, uh, design to flex muscle and demonstrate that there's a block that's you know trying to run the show. Well, I think it's a disappointing approach to take um, because uh, really this could be an opportunity for us to reach consensus on this council and to reach an agreed upon position. So I'm very very disappointed. I think that this current process is going to be an exploding cigar that blows up in the face of those councillors who are opposing uh, this motion today. And um, I really urge you all to think very, very carefully before you vote this down and think very, very carefully about the message you send. Because you're saying to the community, we don't care about the needs analysis. We don't care about the draft communication and engagement plan. Members, please. Members, please. Excuse me, Lord Mayor. Oh, sorry, Councillor Kouros. Councillor Sims is summing up. Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims is summing up. Councillors, if they don't support this motion today, are saying we're just going to plough ahead. We're going to plough ahead and ignore the great elephant in the room, which is the needs analysis. I mean, to me, this is a bizarre position to take. It is politics at its worst. And I urge members to think very, very carefully about the approach that they are taking. Because make no mistake, if this motion goes down today, then the battle lines are drawn when it comes to the crows and the parklands and there is no going back. I encourage members to take this opportunity for a consensus and for us to work together on a process that is fair for residents and rate players. Because if you don't, good luck to you. Members, I'll put that to the vote. Those in favour of the amendment? Those against? Division. That is, fa that fails. Division call. Councillors, the division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Donovan, Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims. So, members, I'll look for someone to move the original motion. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Abraham today, did you want to speak to it? Councillor Hyde. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I won't be voting for this. And um, for the reasons that I've already outlined, I think this process is deeply flawed. Um, we have a, um, a cloud of secrecy that is shrouding um, this council's approach to engaging with the Crows. I think the community has been completely shut out of this process. And now this council has also turned its nose up at the needs analysis work. So I won't be supporting this and uh, I encourage other councillors to vote against this as well so that we can go back to the drawing board and come up with a process that actually serves the interests of our residents and ratepayers. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran? Yes, I think today um, we did reach a consensus in the committee that obviously a needs analysis is useless unless it's given to the person who's about to rebuild our aquatic centre to inform them as to why, what we need. To do it after they've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and presented it a glossy thing is, is ridiculous. But I think more importantly, the council dividing on factional lines tonight um, uh, has shown that this has gone to the ridiculous degree. And I think it has, uh, I haven't used the word dysfunction quite as um, openly as uh, Phil Martin has, but I now agree with him. This process is deeply flawed. Um, it's unethical. It is going against every precept of local government. We have seen plans. We know exactly where they're gonna be built. We know exactly how big the buildings are. I would be very surprised if they changed very much from that. And they're completely uninformed by any facts from here. Uh, I will be um, sending a letter um, as uh, the senior councillor on this council to the minister, to Minister Canole, to ask him to put in a full investigation into this process. I think there's boards on, borders on maladministration, and I think it should be checked out. Thank you. 
Members, any further discussion? Councillor Martin. Look, Lord Mayor, I am uh, I'm really disappointed in this. This was a sensible motion, originally moved by Councillor Hyde, and it proposed that we go out and we look at what it is that the community wants, whether they want a gym, whether they want a swimming pool that's big enough to take competition events, whether they want a wading pool, whether there was a possibility of any involvement of other stakeholders, including other local government areas. And now the decision of this council is that we will allow the Crows to continue with their construction plans and then at a later stage, end of the year, early next year, give them the needs analysis. Now, it's December is the earliest date. That was, that was the motion from Councillor Hyde, December. Now, I regret that what this does tonight, this factional vote, is send the message, the clear message to the community that this is a done deal, that we are permitting the Crows to, to pursue their proposal to take over the parklands. That is the only interpretation a lot of people will put on it. And I say to Team Adelaide, you, you are damned by this. You are in deep trouble with the ratepayers of this city and the people of South Australia. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor. Oh, sorry, I had Councillor Kurovs first. My apologies. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to reiterate this. This is an unsolicited bid process. This is not just limited to the court. <coughs> and agreed to by council um, for all matters in, in relation to strategic the strategic public matters uh, to be brought forward to the council. So I just wanted to make it clear that this unsolicited bid process was agreed by the last term of council. So this is a matter that we're going through, um, uh, which has already been agreed by council. And so it's just a matter of honouring what the previous council have agreed to do. Deputy Lord Mayor. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, just to be clear, uh, the needs analysis is going to happen anyway, regardless. It is part of conspiracy field, place like why. Um, it is really important. Councillor Martin. I was agreeing to the invitation of the Lord Mayor. Conspiracy field. He field. arrest me, not you, Lord Mayor. Conspiracy field. Um, so the process, the needs analysis is going to happen anyway. It's part of the guiding principles of this council that the service delivery, which we've debated and we've put in a guiding principle, to make sure it's of a level that is acceptable by this council and in the community via a community consultation process. So that needs analysis will feed into that process. Councillor Sims, please. Sorry. That needs analysis will feed very clearly into that process uh, and we'll have the opportunity as a council to take that to the public. Councillor Moran, please. Councillor Moran. It's not school. I'm not. It's the chamber, the chamber where we actually sit and we listen to each other and we encourage debate and discussion and we listen to the other members when it is their turn to speak. Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, Councillor. Um, the, the important note here. Um, there are two schools of thoughts when it comes to this, and this started off from the beginning where there were specific elected members in this chamber that disagree with the decision of the council. That's that's the reality. The reality is we've heard it from, from Councillor Martin, from Councillor Sims, Councillor Moran all the time that they want to go to a public consultation first if they want to see a AFC headquarters on the aquatic uh, centre facility before we do anything. This is their intention, and I guarantee you, we'll go through this whole process and the AFC could bend over backwards and it will not change the minds of any of those councillors. They have made up their mind no, you already. Have. You have. They have made up their mind. They do not want to see the aquatic centre redeveloped into an AFC headquarters with services for the community. They've made up their mind. They've already made it public. They don't want to see that What's support at all. Councillor. I agree. I don't want any crows there. You are absolutely right. So we know what the intention is. So to go through a stalling mechanism where this has already been considered as part of the guiding principles of this council, 
There will be an opportunity for us to marry all that up and go out to a public consultation process with a package that is clear. Councillor Martin spoke before about let the crows go and go ahead with their construction plans. There is no construction plans. There is even design plans. The design plans are still yet to be submitted to this council. We know the size of the building, the height of the building. I call beep shit on that. It doesn't exist. All right? That stuff does not exist. I mean, they are fear-mongering the community. They're scaring the community into a panic. If I may have one more minute, please. No. Just tell the community. They're scaring the community into a panic where what we are trying to do is package everything in absolute clarity and detail as part of our unsolicited bid process that was voted on by Councillor Martin, by Councillor Moran, by myself. In this council, we've endorsed it at the last council process, only to crap on it in this council. How convenient is that? How convenient is that? So look, it's very clear for me, we've already heard from the councillors that don't want to ever see the crows. Councillors, please. We've already heard from the councillors that... Well, I mean, I can't hear. Councillor Kouros keeps talking in my ears. So you keep talking. Oh. Please continue. I can't believe some of the oldest people in this chamber and sometimes the youngest people in this chamber. I can't. Can you speak up? Hearing aid. Um, oh, look, Lord, Lord Mayor, Mayor can, um, can we have an end to members, these Members, yes, could jokes, we actually please? just, actually, they go it's both ways, can we actually please finish? Making jokes about older people, he does it all the time, that, it's unacceptable. Well, you'll be next, Lord Mayor, you'll be next. Have you seen my hair? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to say something that I respect democracy that they've already disagreed with this position. They don't ever want to see the crows on the Aquatic Centre headquarters, no matter what happens. It could be painted in gold. Colonel White could come back to life and design it. It would not change a thing for these councillors. They have already made up their mind. They do not want to see progress in our city. However, Members. the majority of this council, Lord Mayor, that's the last, I'm sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor, but that is the last warning. We are just going to stop interrupting, okay? The majority of this council, Lord Mayor, call it Team Adelaide, call it whatever you want to do, that seven members of this council disagree with them, and the squeaky wheel is the loudest. However, please respect council's decision and respect the unsolicited bid process, and most importantly, respect confidentiality when it's voted on by this council, because it is binding. Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Of course, um, we hear jibes coming out from across the chamber that we're not in school, um, and we might not be in school technically, but I'm compelled to educate my colleagues about a very important concept that hasn't really been fleshed out in this debate as yet, and that's, of course, the concept of sovereign risk, um, which, if you can indulge me, is, uh, is the idea that when uh, uh, governments or government jurisdictions start tinkering retrospectively with the conditions they put in place for businesses and commercial operations and private enterprise, that creates this idea of sovereign risk, which then sends a message that uh, we are an unreliable business partner, we are an unreliable strategic partner, and you do business with us at your own risk. Of course, that is not the message I want to send to the private sector, um, uh, whether it be in the city of Adelaide, South Australia, or Australia more broadly. Um, and that is part of the reason why I'm not willing um, to indulge this North Adelaide nimbyism and put a handbrake on this process. Councillor. That's why I'm not willing to put a handbrake on this process. Of course, not least of all, because we won't see a formulated uh, proposal until the needs analysis has been done. So what we're arguing on is six one, half a dozen the other, really. Um, uh, it, is, it is a political argument that some in this chamber want to peddle, and they've admitted as much that they will never support this, regardless of what comes back to us by way of a formalised proposal, when that comes at some point in the medium to longer term throughout this council term. Um, and, so, and so, Lord Mayor, I couldn't in good, good conscience support the variation, and I would, uh, I would impress upon members here that they must support this. It's the only way forward. Um, the administration are taking this forward in a very sensible manner, in a cautious manner, um, that actually, uh, a manner that begets um, the gravity of the situation that we're dealing with and pays tribute to the fact that we are dealing with public land and that we are going to put the community's needs first. That is why we won't see a formal 
proposal until the needs analysis is done. And so I commend this motion to the Chamber. <laughs> Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham said it's summer. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I thought I'd never get here. Um, Lord Mayor, uh, we're not here to uh, entertain any conspiracy theories. Uh, we're here to uh, uh, get on with the recommendations, uh, get on with the unsolicited uh, proposal process, and hopefully common sense will prevail. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Division. Councillors, the division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Canole, Councillor Abraham Zadeh, Councillor Ho, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Carer, Councillor Hyde and Councillor Kuros. Thank you, members. I think that's the first time we've done a division on something for noting. Um, I'm going to go to 7.1 recommend, recommendation two, which is the minor amendments development plan amendment. That's Councillor Abraham today. Second, please. That was thank you, Councillor Canole. Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak to it? Uh, just to thank the administration for their work, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Canole. Members? Not back to Councillor Abraham today to a sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to recommendation three, which is the review of event noise mitigation standard operating procedures. And I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Hyde, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak to it? No, Councillor Knoll. <laughs> members? If not, I'll go back to the mover, Councillor Hyde. Summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. I now go to recommendation four, which is the review of the Adelaide Parklands Events Management Plan 2016 to 2020. I look for a mover, Councillor Martin. I wish to move a variation, an alternative motion. Uh, alternate motion. Yeah. And I will look for a seconder. Uh, Councillor Moran has indicated that she will second this. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Martin. <laughs> Councillor Martin, would you like to speak to the amendment? Yes, I would, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, I'm not going to put much effort into this because it is clear that we are voting on factional lines tonight. So it will be defeated. No, no, it will be defeated. Well, look, I'll, I'll Members, I'll, please, I'll, could, I'll could Councillor Martin please speak to the amendment and talk to the amendment, please? I'm, I'm sorry, Lord Mayor. I'm not sure who I'm talking to here. Um, look, this is this is uh, uh, bad politics 101. What actually happened was that in July, the council administration, after engaging consultants, consulting with stakeholders at every level, engaging with the community, recommended a series of amendments to our APLEM and uh, the standard operating uh, procedures for noise management. Um, they came up. Uh, with some great recommendations that suggested that noise should cease at 11.59 in key areas where a paid consultant over a period of six months had identified there were noise issues for people in North Adelaide. A consultant paid over six months monitoring noise. Uh, Lord Mayor, you supported this uh, when it uh, appeared uh, and in fact I remember hearing you on ABC Radio saying this is great. Now, during the course of the day, that changed, and I don't know why, but certainly a stakeholder tells me that they spoke to you and impressed upon you that they were unhappy about that and the impact on events. Well, I'm happy to give you the name after Lord Mayor. Well, you can give, give me the name now if you like, Councillor. No, I will do that privately rather than embarrass the person here. Now, Lord Mayor, you changed your mind, and so did the Deputy Lord Mayor, who'd been supportive. Everybody changed their mind. And the consequence of that, that change of mind to support events that go until 3 a.m. is that the residents of North Adelaide are going to be inconvenienced further and for a long time with music until 3 a.m. that an independent consultant has told, told the whole council is avoidable. Uh, and the best way to do that is to stop the noise at 12 because the topographical uh, uh, identity of the area is such that wind, low cloud, and <coughs> noise all exacerbate the problem. Now, there's only one area that's affected really, and that's Pinky Flat, 
Although residents in Pennington Gardens believe that they're entitled to an early evening rather than being treated to noise until the early hours of the morning. Just a point of order, Lord Mayor. I know some councillors would like to go back in time, but 2010 should be 2020. Um, wasn't aware of that. 2020 is fine. I'll sit down and wait. Change. It's oh, <laughs> time flies, doesn't it, Lord Mayor? Nine years like that. Now, look. The problem with this is that uh, if we don't make these changes, then we are going to inconvenience the residents of North Adelaide for some time. Uh, and I, no, no, look, huff, 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 I hear from the other side. What about some empathy? And I, look, I, I understand that's difficult. If you're living, as the majority of the team do, in places like Stonyville, like Prospect, like Unley, like Penunga, Hyde Park, I mean, if you don't live in the area and you're voting on this stuff without actually considering the residents, you have no empathy. You have no empathy. They are concerned to see that their, their uh, privacy, their capacity to enjoy their residences um, is protected. Now, this in no way shuts down events. Events can continue until midnight. Midnight on a Saturday night, on a Sunday night before a public holiday, that is not unreasonable. And Lord Mayor, I, I know you look amused. Lord Mayor, I'm going to ask for 30 seconds, and I know it'll be denied. I want to no, see that. 30 seconds, you are granted, <laughs> Councillor. Oh, okay, jeez. Where's the show of hands? I saw it. Sure. I'm happy to wait for the show of hands, Lord Mayor. Members, 30 seconds. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Oh, Lord Mayor, I didn't realise I had so many good friends. Um, I haven't either. Um, Lord Mayor, this is not going to lead to events going to Melbourne, as indeed you suggested uh, at the last committee meeting when this came up. This doesn't affect any major tour. It is about music that is largely background music, with some exceptions like So Frenchy, which caused so much inconvenience to people in North Adelaide. In fact, I think Councillor Kira remarked about that at one stage too in a committee meeting. So, Lord Mayor, I do ask the members in this room to just endorse this. It is nothing more than the recommendation of the administration. And it does take into consideration the approaching 10,000 people who live in North Adelaide, who choose to live there, but many of whom feel they're being driven out by this kind of uh, intrusion. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Okay. Um, members, I'll just actually respond to some of the comments from Councillor Martin before I go to the floor. Um, I actually did uh, talk to administration and the events team, and I do actually trust the work they do. There were a few things in the paper which concerned me, which I then sat down with them after the committee meeting and worked through. So my understanding is that of the 62 events that were held in the last year, none of those events went past midnight. And so therefore, uh, a lot of my concerns were addressed. What I was trying not to do is in the way that councils can sometimes do, is put an additional gate or an additional hurdle for those that may wish to trade past the midnight uh, uh, time slot and therefore that we're actually sort of making a, a more difficult if somebody wanted to come into those areas. In terms of the three areas that have been there, certainly Creswells and Pennington, and I know that uh, Councillor Moran uh, mentioned that when we were in committee, and Pinky Flat is a particularly difficult area. There were two other areas that were there and this was a blanket um, change to the times. Um, I have actually met with the team on several occasions and I am satisfied that this can be managed. Anything that comes into the council that would be past that time would come in for approval to the council anyway. So it's not that it would that they can't do it, it's simply that it would come in for a separate approval process. Just a question of you, Lord Mayor. If there were no events that went after midnight in Pinky Flat, why then won't you support an 11.59 closing? That's just the point that I just made. I just said I did. You do support 1159. I just said I have no problem with the amendment and I support the amendment in those areas. Oh, Lord Mayor, I, I'm overcome. <laughs> I 
I'm pleased to hear it, Councillor Martin. Can I buy you a drink later? You absolutely <laughs> may. I would prefer, actually, if we didn't talk over the other members for the rest of the uh, council meeting. Well, that would well, be including myself. Thank you, Councillor well, that's, Martin. That's a members, I'm that's going a to the floor. Would anybody else like to talk to the amendment? Councillor Kerrick. Thanks, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, this this is a really important issue. It is worth uh, spending the time to to consider and get right. Uh, it is a, a matter of constituents' residents' well-being, and they may sometimes uh, we may not get many complaints, uh, but it is often the case that residents feel uh, that they have no capacity to make a complaint, or a complaint will fall on deaf ears. Uh, pardon the pun. Well, um, the. I guess I've got a question uh, because we're looking at uh, a rule that, that closes uh, Piggy Flat and the others at uh, 11 and 12. Um, but surely the problem uh, is more the uh, operation of the main amplified music uh, uh, performance. Uh, so I'm wondering whether uh, whether if we don't pass this, if we if we leave this amendment, I'm not putting this to yourself. And to uh, the CEO, and I might well, I, I unfortunately missed the committee meeting where this was discussed. But uh, is there scope down the track to to fine tune this to enable events to continue on to one? I don't think it's a problem. So friends, you so chic. I was there. It's not a problem that they were uh, going and functioning till one a.m. or possibly even two. It was just the amplified uh, main event. Um, I think it's perfectly sensible to impose th these particular boundaries, uh, uh, time boundaries on the main amplified event, but actually shutting the whole event down is a different matter. So is there scope to modify this if we reject this amendment at this stage? I, I guess what I was saying is that no events were shut down, and that's what the information that we went back through after the committee meeting. I'll just go to the CEO to answer that question. You're clear you're leading this. Can you respond? Well, thank you to, um, to the presiding members. So the previous item on the agenda um, was the noise um, operating guidelines, um, and we were making recommendations in there to tweak uh, decibel levels, particularly the low bass levels, um, which are the ones that we tend to get complaints about. So that's already been addressed through um, the previous item. Sorry, sorry. So my question is, um, are we not shutting off the, with this the capacity to have events uh, on occasion go on to a 1 or 2 a.m., uh, but uh, do, will we retain the capacity to restrict the major amplified performance uh, and keep the event going on, but just restrict the major amplified performance? Will we still have the capacity to do that down the track if we reject this motion? Thank you, Director. Uh, yes, we will. Uh, Councillor Kouros. I just want to uh, make it clear that I actually door knocked the whole area uh, near Pinky Flat. And uh, the most of the complaints that I actually uh, received in regards to noise is the fact that when Archie's Boathouse was operating and it was um, causing some grief to a lot of residents. Um, I think this event, the past event for the, uh, the event that was held at Pinky Flat, I believe there were, were minimal amount of complaints and it still did stop at 12 o'clock. So, um, and I believe that um, the residents have been quite happy with that and we haven't received um, any complaints. Also for the fact that we moved the stage um, to a little bit further down, positioned it differently um, and the noise bounced off back into city rather than back into North Adelaide. So I really think it's been great work from the administration to actually work with the event organisers at Pinky Flat to make sure that the noise doesn't resonate back to the North Adelaide residents and that was clearly said to me by the residents, especially with the last event. So I think that's fantastic. Um, uh, now that the pontoon's gone um, and we don't have Archie's Boathouse there, and I guess that's not resonating to the residents. So I think with this amendment, I mean, it's already stating exactly what we already do anyway, I believe. Um, we don't have events that go past 12 anyway. So um, if this is just a matter of just making a stance for Councillor Martin for his, for for whatever reason, then fair enough. But I think administration do a great job in making sure that uh, the noise is uh, not mitigated across to the Are you Councillor Moran? Yeah, I, I think Councillor um, Kouros has got it wrong. The, the amendment here is going back to the administration's recommendation Correct. of 12 o'clock. It's not Councillor Martin's idea at all. It's actually going back. Uh, we changed it. We went away from the administration in committee, and now Councillor Martin is sensibly bringing us back. So I think it's very rude to say that it's um, 
Well, you know, if you're not here, don't comment then. Um, I live in North Adelaide. I don't visit it occasionally, as some councillors do, and I can assure you it's very difficult to complain when it's noisy. You ring up me, the, the councillor, that they know well, that's lived there for 30 years, um, but they're very loathe to ring up council, and it's not really an obvious place that you ring up. I mean, I usually send it to Claire. Um, uh, all the complaints I get, I then ring Claire. But there, there are... <laughs> I think Claire. Well, Claire's the only one that's been here nearly as long as I have, so it's the only number I actually know. Um, but um, I can assure you um, that Archie's Boathouse was one, but actually Archie's Boathouse wasn't a big problem because that Archie's Boathouse hits the oval. It doesn't go up. The, the noise problem is Pinky Flat. It goes up um, Montefiore Hill, um, I don't hear it because there's a bank of houses there, the colleges and everything. But when I've walked down there, because people have rung me late at night, and I assure you they are not always close to stopping their music at 12 o'clock, um, it is unbelievably noisy. North Adelaide's really nervous um, about the sort of accusation that often comes from this chamber, that they're whiny old people that really should just, you know, take their hearing aids out and go to sleep, which is, is rude and unfair. Uh, so they're loath to complain too much, but I can assure you, just because we haven't seen, had many complaints, that it, there is not a complainable situation there. It is like it's on their front doorstep when the prevailing winds are going a certain way. It's un believable um, So I'm glad that we've uh, gone back to the administration's um, recommendation. I'm glad that uh, Councillor Martin has liaised with the administration. I know the administration was mighty annoyed that we changed it. Um, so I, I, rec I recommend this. This does not shut down the city, as some of the media um, said. These are just a couple of event spaces that happen to have um, a noise problem. The rest of the city, open to three, four, whenever you like it. These are specific locations that were causing problems. And uh, I urge you to follow the administration's recommendation. Thank you. If I could just ask uh, Director Mockler in terms of complaint processes, rather than your direct line. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Mayor. Yes, I prefer my direct line um, isn't called. Um, we require all our events that have a music component to have a hotline, um, and that number is made available through leafleting to um, those areas that we think um, is going to be impacted. It's usually on our website, particularly during the uh, festival season in February and March. Um, and it's a requirement of, under, of having a lease with us that that line um, is monitored on a daily basis. Our teams get um, data and stats back, um, and so that's the way we do manage it. And we try and make sure we promote that number to those that, um, that, that think they um, may have an issue further down the track. Thank you. I have Councillor Hyde, and then a question from Councillor Cruz. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just rise ever so briefly, because I'm worried. Um, I'm worried that the, the fight is lost on this one, sadly, once again. Of course, I would remind members in the first instance that it wasn't actually a recommendation per se that came to us. Um, uh, it was a workshop, um, a workshop that was based on a motion that came to the previous council um, uh, about noise in North Adelaide. And of course, that was back in the days um, uh, when, uh, when you had the pontoon there, um, when you had uh, venues like Archie's Boathouse operating um, and what have you. And it seems to my mind that we've uh, sophisticated our operations somewhat in how we manage noise in the city. And it's very pleasing to hear that there is a hotline um, uh, for residents to call. Um, but it, it's, a great, it's a great shame, Lord Mayor, that this has been brought in again, because of course, the recommendation was based on feedback that was given in that workshop. Um, and the feedback that was given in that workshop was because that report stated um, uh, very clearly that the aim of, uh, of closing the city down, the aim, aim of shutting down the city um, uh, at uh, well, before 12 a.m. was to lessen the nighttime activity in the city of Adelaide. And I think it is disgraceful. I think it is disgraceful that councillors will come into this chamber and argue, argue in favour of, uh, of a previous report that wants to shut down the nightlife in the city. And I think it says a lot. I think it says a lot. I think it tells us that the fund police are out again. They're out in force. They've rolled down the hill from North Adelaide and they are looking to overly regulate 
and put a handbrake again, once again, um, on people enjoying themselves in the city, people coming in to the central business district of a capital city um, uh, and having a good time until, heaven forbid, they want to have a good time until 12.01 a.m. My gosh, I mean, let's get the red and blue out there, get the sirens on. This is ridiculous, Lord Mayor. Um, and so I would encourage members, members who uh, are supportive of the night economy in the city of Adelaide, to vote this motion down um, and vote uh, on the original uh, motion that was passed by a committee uh, last week. It's the common sense way forward, um, and uh, I condemn this motion entirely. Councillor Cross, did you have a question still? Yes, I do, Lord Mayor, because I wasn't here during the discussion. Um, I just want to know how many complaints did administration receive in regards to... No, you asked it. You asked it. When it came I didn't know the actual numbers. Lord Mayor, did I ask this before? Can I not No, I didn't question? actually hear that you answered that question. Do you have... Um, Director, did you um, I have the papers here, hard copy. Um, from memory, was it... There was various various numbers um, depending on the event, so it wasn't. Um, here we go. A total of 19 over this year, 2019. Um, Out of how many events? Sorry. Oh, major events. 19 complaints for the summer period for 2019. Um, I think right. 2018 was higher in terms of number of complaints. That's because that's after we worked out how to yeah, better. Yeah, how to right. better. Yeah. Okay, so 19 complaints in 2000. One nine. Yeah. One nine. Yeah. One nine. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Is that a question, Councillor Carroll? Uh, can I move an amendment? No. Can I suggest you, a no, variation? You've already spoken. I can't suggest Councilor. a variation. Councillors, um, uh, before I go to Councillor Martin to sum up, um, I will actually just respond to Councillor Hyde's because the reducing the nighttime activity was on two slides of the deck that we got in the workshop and it was the same thing that triggered my response, which I then went and clarified with the team and I'm I was satisfied that they're actually addressing that through the mitigation and through the work that they've done in Pookie Flat, particularly around things like French Soshiki, which was one of the um, events that actually caused some of the problems the year before, but they'd actually worked through that. Um, I'll go back to Councillor, oh, sorry, that on me. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Just a question, it's very clear from the Adelaide Council 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 um, in the case, and that's just a follow-up on Councillor Kira's question, the event that someone does apply to have Pinkley Flat, uh, Pennington Gardens or Crestwood Gardens being used for any events, that will still come to Council. So the administration will not discourage an application, is that correct? Um, absolutely not. So there's already a resolution in the, from the previous council that any new event that takes place in the parklands that goes beyond 12 midnight, um, should be considered by, by the Chamber. So that is brought in as a policy exception position. Awesome. Well, much to uh, Councillor Martin's surprise, I do support this. Um, hopefully, if you get a good night's sleep, you can't be nicer at Council. <laughs> Councillor Martin, would you like to sum up? Oh, look, I, I'm just feeling the love, Lord Mayor. I'm one last one. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just overwhelmed. Um, look, uh, just to embellish the point, um, these are guidelines, they can be altered with a individual approach to council. This is, however, the recommendation of the administration. It did follow months and months of research. Um, it is a long-standing issue in council that predates Councillor Kouros's election. It goes back well before even I was a member of this council. And it is significant because it is the first time that the administration has been able to independently identify that there are characteristics about that area that are making noise much more pronounceable up in North Adelaide. Um, this gives great comfort to people and I thank um, the Lord Mayor, the Deputy Lord Mayor and others for supporting this. Members will go to the vote, those in favour? Those against? <laughs> That's carried. Division. division has been called. <laughs> Councillors, a division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. <laughs> Councillor Canole, Councillor Abraham Zadeh, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Ho, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Carer, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran. Oh. 
<laughs> Councillor Sims. Members, that takes us to item 7.2, which is the advice of the uh, recommendation of the Reconciliation Committee for the Stretch Wrap 2018-2021 Implementation Progress Report from April to June. I look for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Seconder, Councillor Sims. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to him? Uh, no, I'm Councillor Sims? No. Members? Councillor Donovan? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just really briefly, um, I just wanted to draw attention to the amazing work of Nicole Gollan, who I think has, uh, through my um, time with the Reconciliation Committee, has just done a sterling job in leading the, the stretch wrap work and consistently every meeting seems to come up with a, an amazing amount of work that she's done toward the actions within the stretch wrap. And um, if anyone hasn't yet had a chance to read the report, there's lots of good stuff in there. Um, and one thing that I think was was notable was the uh, that the City of Adelaide is the first South Australian council to have membership with Supply Nation. And Supply Nation is um, or provides uh, Australia's leading database of verified Indigenous businesses, whereby you can search for business by business name, product, service area or category. Um, and this uh, allows us to move toward our social procurement goals. So just one tiny little snippet of the gold that unfurled in our meeting last week. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Um, members, if not, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Members, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Members, that takes us to 8.1, which is the Royal Adelaide Hospital Auxiliary Executive Committee. Uh, so, um, so procedural first. So, if I can actually have someone to them in, thank you. So, sorry, the um, recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Sims. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Ho. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Ho. Members, if not, to sum up. So, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, I'll now look for a nomination for a representative for the City of Adelaide. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I nominate Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, do you accept your nomination? No, I do, Lord Mayor. Uh, members, are there any other nominations? Um, if not, uh, okay. so I'll ask for a motion to uh, appoint Councillor Martin as the City of Adelaide representative. Thank you, Councillor Sims. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Sims, do you wish to speak to it? I need to commend Councillor Martin. Councillor Hyde. <laughs> Members. If not, back to the mover, Councillor Sims. Summed up. Thank you. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Members, that takes us to item nine on the agenda. Um, question 9.1, Councillor Martin. Question on notice, Crow's licence and park two. Um, uh, the, do you want me to read the question, Lord Mayor? Uh, we can take the question as read. Happy to do that. And take the uh, responses, replies read as well. Um, do, uh, no one else has a copy of that in the gallery, so if you would mind. Okay. Uh, media have copies, uh, the other members in the gallery don't. So the answer is one, it's not correct that the Crows licence is owned by the Melbourne based Australian Football League, AFL. The Adelaide Football Club, AFC, owns its own licence to play in the AFL and point two, not applicable given the response outlined in part one. Members, that takes us to question uh, 9.2, question on notice, Councillor Martin. Um, I'm happy to take it as read. Take it as read and also the response. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just need to connect, correct something on public record um, with regards to the statement that was made um, in this question. Um, just to have it reflected on public record that one, I did not fail to disclose any interest on the register of interest that the article does note, and there have been comments also that I did disclose my interest in the building plant supply company and that it was administrative oversight. 
Two, that I also did not need to disclose any interest with the said failed building company because I am not a director, a shareholder, or an investor of the so, of the so said failed building company. My companies that I am only a 25% shareholder of were customers of the said failed building company. Thank you, Lord that is noted. Uh, we go to 9.3. Councillor Sims, question on notice. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm happy for the, um, the question um, and the answer to be taken as read, but only if um, the media are provided with a copy of the... Uh, my understanding is the media has been uh, supplied with copies okay. of the questions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sims. That takes us to uh, questions without notice. So, ooh, hands everywhere. I'll go to Councillor Sims, then I saw the Deputy Lord Mayor, then I saw Councillor Martin, and then Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I note uh, Administration's response to my question uh, regarding how the Adelaide Crows satisfied the uniqueness criteria of Council's unsolicited proposal guidelines. I note in the response the steering committee was satisfied the uniqueness criterion was met. Can administration please uh, explain to me how this proposal cannot be readily covered by competitors uh, within the timeframes proposed by the proponent and how exactly this is a genuinely innovative idea? See you. Through you, Lord Mayor. Councillor, I'm happy to take that question offline. I can now answer that for you. Alternatively, you can put it on notice to the next meeting. I'm happy to put it on notice, CEO, although I must, I must express some frustration given I did put the question on notice and I had expected a more comprehensive response than simply the committee was satisfied, the uniqueness criterion was met. I assume the committee would be satisfied, but I'd like to understand why exactly they consider this to be a uh, a project that cannot be delivered by competitors and why it is such a genuinely innovative idea or whether there is anything in this proposal that uh, would justify limits being placed on um, the proposal, for instance, intellectual property, strategic land holdings, unique finance arrangements. And it seems to me that um, this criteria has not been complied with. I'd like to understand the thought process there. So, Councillor, would you like to put that on notice or would you like the CEO to follow up I'll, I'll post the meeting? I'll draft something on notice for the next meeting. Thank you very much, Councillor. Um, next, I had Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I have my question. Sorry, on the, uh, I did provide it to the administration. And I'm happy to take that um, as read, um, if that's easier, but leaving that's without notice for the purpose of the public. Can the administration provide the council with an update to what application is being considered by our planning team with regards to the Adelaide Oval Hotel? Sorry, if I can just have a correction there, Adelaide Oval Hotel. Can the administration provide an explanation to why this is being considered as a category one development? And can the council push to have this development considered as a category two or a category three development? Thank you. Uh, thank you, CEO. Shanti, you're here, thanks. Can you respond? Um, through the Lord Mayor, I'll uh, respond to the questions um, by each one. Um, so the question uh, of what application is being considered by our planning team with regards to the Adelaide o Oval Hotel. Um, an application with building rules consent um, was submitted to Council um, in line with the planning consent that was issued by SCAP for the hotel earlier this year. It is a requirement under the Development Act then when, that when a building rules consent is issued, that development approval is then issued within five working days, where that application is consistent with the planning consent. In this instance, the building rules consent that was issued 
was consistent with the plan and consent, and so therefore development approval had to be issued. In relation to question two, can the administration provide an explanation as to why this is being considered as a category one development? I can advise you that this application uh, is in the parkland zone and it is listed as a merit form of development, which is a category one form of development and it was assessed accordingly by SCAP when SCAP assessed and approved the plan and consent for the hotel. In relation to the third question, can the council push to have this development considered as category two or category three development? By virtue of the fact of the location of the, of the proposed hotel at the Adelaide Oval, which is located in the parkland zone, whereby the, the development is actually listed as category one, it has to be assessed as a category one development. Thank you, Shanti. Um, I next have Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I refer to the administration's answer to the previous question about the Crows licence. Um, I asked if the Crows licence is owned by the Melbourne-based AFL, and the administration has answered no. Could the administration advise if the AFL owns the Crows? CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor, I'm advised that they do not. And so the media reports that they hold one share are incorrect. Yeah, look, I'm not prepared to comment on that. I can take um, take your question on notice and provide a further update. Uh, I'm happy, Lord Mayor, to lodge it on notice for the next meeting. Thank you, Councillor. Um, and uh, turning now to the, uh, the matter of elected member interests, and I, I do wish to make clear that um, I make uh, no allegations of improper behaviour in this, but uh, and I that, think uh, that question has been answered. Is this another question? This is, this is a question in relation to the answer that was received from the administration, mm -hmm. and it seeks a, a point of clarity, and I make clear in. Uh, the preface to the question that I make no allegation of improper behaviour by asking the question. But the question is, could the administration clarify its response at two in response to the question on notice? Is it correct to say that the test of whether a member has a conflict of interest is not whether the information received in a council gathering or meeting is of potential commercial benefit to that elected member, but it is whether the meeting at which the information of potentially a commercial benefit is the subject of a vote. CEO. Again, through you, Lord Mayor, I'll take that on notice. Would you like me to lodge that formally as well? Certainly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. I have Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, my question is, uh, given the current untidy landscaping condition of both uh, the North Terrace tram uh, stop island, uh, which is in front of Lot 14, uh, and the King William Road uh, stop island, uh, that is adjacent Elder Park, what are the plans for these uh, stop islands slash plant boxes? To see you. Through you, Lord Mayor, we've been doing a fair bit of work on this, but Clinton, you've been leading that. Can you answer the question? Through Lord Mayor, thanks for the question, Councillor. Um, the tram stop islands that you referred to uh, were the islands um, associated with the North Terrace tram upgrade project um, that was delivered by the state government, um, delivered by the Department for Planning, Transport and Infrastructure. Um, the condition of the landscape, um, soil planting and irrigation has um, not been accepted by uh, our staff at the City of Adelaide. Um, the tram project is complete, but we've identified the work as being defective and not accepting uh, of our standards. The agreement we've got in place with uh, DIPT um, sees them delivering the landscape, the landscape islands to an agreed standard that we've already agreed in terms of the design. Um, and 
it's to be delivered at the cost of the project and that's yet to be done. So we're working with um, DIPTI at the moment to achieve that. Once they achieve that landscaping outcome, we will then assume care and control of those landscapes. Thank you. Members, if there are no more questions without notice, we'll go to item 11 on the agenda, which is motions on notice. Uh, item 11.1, Councillor Abraham today, motion on notice. Lord Mayor, I move the motion as printed and seek a seconder. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, um, Lord Mayor, before I speak to this motion, can I acknowledge uh, the, um, the commitment that uh, the City of Adelaide makes uh, to its staff? Uh, that's uh, highlighted in, uh, in point two in this motion. Um, Lord Mayor, the reason why I bring this, uh, this motion to the Chamber is uh, because of the staggering uh, statistics uh, of domestic violence. Uh, one of those statistics is that uh, we here in Australia, we lose almost two women a week uh, who are murdered uh, at the hands of their current or former partners here in Australia. Now, if you think that statistic uh, is not bad enough, let me share another one with you. 30% of girls and women over the age of 15 experience some form of domestic violence. Lord Mayor, all we have to do is look around this room and count the number of women that we have here in this chamber. We've got roughly 18 women, and if we go by this statistic, that means there are six, going by this statistic, there are six that uh, uh, may have experienced some form of uh, family or domestic violence. Now, we don't control any legislation here, so we can't uh, go and prosecute anyone. Um, uh, our influence is limited, but nevertheless, we do have uh, we do have a workforce that, uh, uh, that we can uh, influence uh, in a positive way. Um, if we take our workforce and if we take 50% of, uh, of our FTEs, which I believe uh, we have uh, roughly 750 FTEs, so even if we take half of them and if we apply this, uh, this statistic, the 30% uh, statistic on them, we are looking at almost 150 lives that are being affected by this issue. Um, Lord Mayor, uh, the intention of this motion is to uh, create a safe, safe environment for our staff. Um, if we look after our staff, uh, those staff look after our ratepayers, they look after our residents. Next time we ask for a report and next time we ask for some work uh, to be done, then uh, uh, we, uh, uh, at least uh, we're confident that we are looking after our staff, so our staff can look after us and our ratepayers and our residents. Uh, look forward to the discussion and look forward to uh, the Chamber's support. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to the motion? Is that right? Members? No? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham said it's summer. Uh, Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Members, that takes us to 11.2. Councillor Moran. Um, Councillor Moran, just, be, just before the motion is seconded, um, we're just asking for a point of clarification around the word trader. Oh yes, uh, I'm a street trader. Would you mind putting your microphone on? Thank you. Uh, I'm a street trader. Um, look, I was very disappointed in reading the quality of the reports. Uh, sorry, uh, Councillor, just ask for a seconder. Second. Take, thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, look, I think that um, I believe that the car park that's on there now is an illegal car park. It is an ancillary to activation of the site. Uh, and as I've sent you pictures that the administration seem fit not to answer every day of the car, car park fully parked and there'd be no activation on the site. Okay. I also moved a successful motion that we set a traders car park there sorry. where the administration- Sorry, Councillor Moran, I'm really sorry. Excuse me, Lord Mayor, sorry um, to interrupt you, Councillor Moran, but um, I just want to request if we could take this in parts because I have a conflict of interest in regards to the case. I won't, but uh, yes, I'll, look, that'll become clear sooner. Um, I, I so if you are declaring conflict of interest, Councillor Kouros, you need to leave the room? 4.1, No, you have to leave the whole thing. I'm not taking it in parts. But, sorry, it's, it's up to the members whether we take it in parts.
Oh, sorry, it's up to Councillor Moran and the seconder if we take it in parts. No, so Councillor Kouros, if you have a conflict of interest, you need to... Well, I need to seek advice because I do not have conflict of interest at point two, but I do possibly over point one for the same motion. Okay. So, sorry, I'm trying to interpret the, uh, what is that called, charades that is going on behind here. Sorry, Councillor, if you're declaring conflict of interest, you actually have to declare the conflict and actually um, well, leave the uh, conflict of interest, material conflict of interest on point one. That's regards. correct, but if the motion is being taken in, with it not being taken in parts, you have to remove yourself from the room, from the chamber. Do I do that now or do I, can I stay in chamber and not leave? You can't get out. Um, you have to speak to the conflict, so you have to say what the conflict is. Well, in regards to only point one, um, it's still not clearly defined with traders, but I assume that she means traders of North Adelaide. But uh, if that's the case, I've got a material conflict of interest, but she's not clear on what the traders are. Uh, Councillor Moran did qualify it was O'Connell Street traders. Okay, all right. Well, then I've got a material conflict of interest because we have three businesses, family businesses. Okay, on. thank you, Councillor Kouros. And uh, unfortunately, but you do have to actually leave the room. She won't be long. Um, it, because there are there's many inconsistencies in this report, I don't feel that I can continue with this motion because anybody reading the report would definitely not vote for my motion, which clearly seems to be the intent. Um, I will lodge this motion as a motion on notice for not the next council meeting, but the council meeting after that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. So this has been withdrawn to uh, meeting of the so sorry I just checked with your seconder if you have for it to be withdrawn as well Councillor no. Martin thank you so that's being withdrawn next one I'll um, just wait for Councillor Kouros to return to the room Councillor Martin no, Moran Thank you, members. We go to 11.3, Council Moran, motion on notice, material recovery facility uh, meeting. Once again, I find that the report is misleading. It doesn't give information. It says joint tendering and contracting wage service. doesn't say where or when. Uh, it no way refers to the intent of my motion. I will work with the administration to get a, um, a report on the meaning of my motion. Um, and I will put that on notice for the next council meeting. Thank you. And I'll ask that the CEO set up meetings so I can ex clearly explain what I mean by my motion. So it has some chance of getting through. Oh, thank you, Councillor Moran. Um, thank you, Councillor Moran. That takes us to, so that is withdrawn till the next meeting. That goes to Councillor Sims, motion on notice, protecting building owners in the City of Adelaide. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I uh, move the motion um, as printed and seek a seconder. Are you seconding it, Councillor? Sorry, Councillor Hyde. So that's Councillor Sims, Councillor Hyde. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, members will recall at our uh, last meeting, I um, flagged uh, or had intended to move a motion calling on the state government to implement chain of responsibility laws based on uh, what was in place in Queensland. Um, as a result of the uh, administration uh, comment um, where they identified some of the differences between South Australia and Queensland, I withdrew the uh, motion and I've put forward an alternative motion again tonight, which is in keeping with the same spirit, but is a bit broader in that it calls on the uh, state government to implement the uh, range of um, measures or recommendations from um, the uh, Sharegold Weir report. Um, now, I note in the administration comment um, that there is no explanation about what the Weir, girl, the, the, uh, Weir and Sharegold report is, um, but I have emailed all council members before the meeting um, a summary of the recommendations. So hopefully councillors have had an opportunity to look at that and um, to familiarise themselves with the recommendations. 
This report uh, is in response to the dodgy building crisis that has gripped Melbourne and Sydney and threatens the apartment sector right across our country and of course here in Adelaide. The recommendations cover a raft of areas, including the need for greater oversight and regulation of the building construction industries. In Queensland, they have an independent commission to look at defective work and the use of defective materials. And I believe we do need something like that here in place in South Australia. We also need chain of responsibility laws to ensure that everyone throughout the building process is held to account for defective work and the use of defective material. We know here in SA that this is becoming a big issue. We've seen recently reports of the use of cladding in government buildings, something that I find very concerning. The state government are also giving the green light to more and more construction in the city and they've ripped council out of that process. And we're seeing more and more high rises and in particular apartments propping up, uh, popping up in our city. And so I think it's really critically important that this council does everything that it can to protect building owners. We shouldn't be letting dodgy builders, dodgy developers or dodgy architects off the hook. And there have been examples of defective work in our city. Um, I'm reminded, of course, Lord Mayor, about the court case, which I believe is ongoing, uh, relating to the View Apartments, where residents in uh, that building have reported things like exploding windows and the like, and have been forced to take uh, the developers to court to try and get redress as a result of that. And so it is really important that the state government step up here and uh, ensure the integrity of our uh, apartment building sector in the city. We cannot afford to be hit by the kind of dodgy building crisis that has hit Melbourne and Sydney. And I fear that if we don't see leadership from the state government, we will be similarly afflicted here in South Australia. So my motion is calling for the state government to implement the suite of measures that come out of that national report and to really do what they can to increase the protection of uh, building owners from potentially defective work. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just very briefly, um, I thank Councillor Sims for bringing this to the Chamber um, and also for circulating the report ahead of time as well. I think it's quite informative and quite thorough. Um, uh, I would say just uh, quickly that, of course, um, uh, we do want to grow uh, the, our resident base in the city and, and one of the necessary tools in that kit um, uh, is the, the creation of apartment buildings, more apartment buildings. Um, of course, we need to do that in a measured way. Um, and uh, naturally, there is some tension when that happens. And we need to ensure that our ratepayers and our residents in the city have confidence that the buildings are going up uh, are safe, first and foremost, um, uh, but also that they are built to a high quality. Um, uh, and that is, that, is the other, that is the other thing we need to keep in mind because nothing will, nothing will hurt development in the city more than bad developments going up. And what we need to do is we need to restore faith um, uh, in the people of Adelaide uh, as, as far as these buildings go. Uh, we need to give them every reason um, uh, to want to live in one of them. Uh, and we need to show them that they can be high quality developments. But of course, just in closing, I would say the scariest part about this, um, uh, this crisis and the reason why we need to stop it um, uh, migrating over to, to Adelaide is because what worries me the most is that um, uh, people may be aware of risks in their building, they may be aware of defects in their building, uh, but they're also very, very conscious that they've bought into that building um, and they may well be stuck with the bill of fixing it if they raise those uh, those concerns and those structural defects and what have you. Um, and so you've potentially got people um, uh, sitting on apartments um, uh, and they're not they're not sounding the uh, the alarm on it uh, because they don't want to jeopardise their investment. They don't want to bankrupt themselves. Um, uh, so it's a very very sticky situation um, when these situations do arise. Thankfully, uh, it hasn't been that bad in Adelaide. Uh, but if we uh, if we uh, uh, um, don't pay due consideration, um, uh, then we run the risk of it getting bad. And so that's why I'm pleased to support this motion. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. I have Councillor Kerrick. Oh, it's really just a suggestion to uh, Councillor Sims about the wording. I'm just wondering if we're going to be writing letters, uh, you want usage to um, usage to not perhaps a bit weird to be stronger. That word subsequent, uh, should that be changed to upcoming or something? Because I'm not sure about the proper usage of that word subsequent. Um, I, I would have thought the normal understanding is you'd say subsequent to what? I'm not wedded to it. I'm happy to remove that. Yeah. And um, so I'm not. That's, that's all. Just a very suggestion. Happy with
with that, Councillor Sims, and your seconder, Councillor Hart, you happy with that? Members, any more to Councillor Knoll? Also, just a quick word on that. I think it is certainly very commendable um, that we, uh, you know, because it, it is about the long-term uh, uh, view of the city and we are encouraging people to come into town. Um, and it is certainly, um, uh, you know, I haven't had personal experience, but I have a good close relative who has had great experience with really poor workmanship and it is ongoing and it does need to be controlled and uh, it is it is the, the you know responsibility of governments and, and if we are fortunate one day to get uh, some more responsibility back ourselves uh, by, by being at an appropriate uh, council then you know for us to be able to ensure that uh, our building trades people are delivering quality work and also that in turn means we have quality people and uh, increasing employment and I think all those sort of things work together. And I think it is critical that for a long, you know, for a building that's supposed to stay up for 50 to 100 years, it would be nice it does very elegantly. Thank you. Members, if not, uh, oh, sorry, Councillor Abbey. Just, um, um, just a quick, quick, quick question off administration. In the current process, um, when plans are lodged under uh, building rules consent, uh, those plans are stamped. Um, so I think under the uh, Development Act, would you, who would be responsible if, um, if, uh, if things were to go wrong. Ms. Ditter. Uh, may, uh, through the Lord Mayor, may I have that question repeated, please? Yes, yes. Um, uh, so it's about the current process. Um, when, uh, um, uh, when someone's applying for rare uh, building rules consent, they uh, supply a set of plans. Those plans have been uh, uh, certified, so they've been stamped by a certifier and they are uh, provided to, to council. Now, um, under the uh, Development Act, um, someone is responsible uh, for that. So what's the current process? Is it, uh, if things go wrong, is it the architect that's in fault? Is it the engineer? Is it the builder? Is it the certifier who stamped those plans? Um, the really simple answer to that question is probably all of them, but the problem arises in actually tracing where the problem commenced. So, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Thanks, Lord Mayor, and I thank uh, members for their comments. And look, I, I totally um, agree we do want people to be investing in the city and we want people to be living in apartments, but we do want to ensure that they are of appropriate quality. And of course, this council has had a, a measure in place where we have encouraged people to buy off the plan um, by giving them a rates holiday. Um, and therefore, I think we do have a responsibility to advocate for their interests because a lot of these problems that are presenting uh, interstate um, and indeed some of the issues we've faced here in Adelaide have been with new builds off the plan. Um, so it's really critical that we advocate for their interests. And we know, of course, that one of the problems we also face um, with uh, apartment buildings is that a lot of the issues don't become apparent um, until 10 years into the uh, build. Um, and that's why ensuring that there is better uh, accountability processes is so important so that people aren't let off the hook if they've used defective material or if they've done defective work, if there hasn't been um, appropriate checks and balances throughout the building phase. Sometimes those problems take a while to present. And I do fear that this could be a ticking time bomb for the City of Adelaide and uh, we want to ensure it doesn't explode, Lord Mayor. And that's why we need to implore the state government to take every possible action they can um, to protect uh, the interests of um, property owners in the city. Thank you, members. I ask for the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Members, that takes us to 11.5, Councillor Sims, uh, Zero Waste Platform Trial. Back again, Lord Mayor. Um, I move the uh, motion as uh, printed. And Councillor Hyde as a seconder. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, this motion is um, fairly straightforward. It's asking administration to look at a zero waste platform in the city of Adelaide. Now, members may have seen the link that's provided in the administration comment there. It provides a, an explanation of um, the uh, loop business, which is operating over in the United States. This was a business that was launched at the World Economic Forum, and um, it involves the delivery of consumable goods to residents or businesses in reusable packaging. So when a, a, a user, a consumer is finished with the goods, they simply put them outside the front of their 
front door and uh, they're collected, they're washed and they're reused and, and issued to um, another family or an individual. So it's bringing back the old style milkman model. I'm too young to uh, have used the milkman, uh, that model, but I'm very familiar with it. My mum and dad have talked a lot about it. Um, my mum's from Broken Hill. She uh, comments on the, um, the delivery of milk through the milkman model back in those days. Um, but it's, so it's a return to that style of, um, of reuse, um, which I think has, has been um, popular in the past. Lord Mayor, I'm not suggesting we use any particular um, business model here. I'm just suggesting we look at what's been done um, overseas. Um, and uh, it may be that there's an Australian model that is available for us to, to take up here. Um, it's been used in Paris, in New York, in Brooklyn. It's also being investigated in Canada. And in Brooklyn, there's been partnerships formed with local apartment complexes. And that may well be something that council administration could look at, or maybe there is an option to roll out something like this through the central market. So really, I'm just, producer, uh, I'm just suggesting an investigation, but it's an important investigation, I think, because um, we need to do what we can to reduce waste and um, this really does close the loop in that sense. Thank you. Councillor Hyde. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. It's a pleasure to rise again in support of this. Um, uh, good motion from Councillor Sims. Um, uh, I think it's very important that we, uh, that we look to lessen the scourge of, of plastic and waste generally um, uh, in, our, in our society. I, I suppose I would just highlight as well that South Australia has a proud history when it comes to reducing particularly plastic waste. Um, of course, we're the first state to have the, uh, uh, the deposit refund scheme for, for cans and bottles, um, uh, which is widely popular and it's, we've exported it into state as well. Um, and we're of course the first state to ban um, uh, plastic bags um, as well. So we do have a proud history um, uh, in this area. And I think this is an, a, potentially an important step forward, noting that we are, of course, just exploring it um, and looking to facilitate. But I would say, um, uh, given South Australians' uh, propensity um, uh, to recycle, and I would note um, that, that we're up there as one of the best recyclers per capita in the nation. I think uh, it's either top or second to the top. Um, uh, given our propensity to recycle, I think there would be significant interest in a scheme like this uh, from our ratepayers and possibly wider um, in the greater metropolitan area. And given that, um, uh, noting that a lot of those uh, schemes that Councillor Sims referred to are actually run by private enterprise and what have you, um, uh, I think that it, is, it, it would be very likely that we may be able to entice private enterprise and by all means facilitate them coming into the city and encourage them in coming into the city. Um, but we might be able to lay the groundwork um, for them to come in um, and set up shop uh, and create a viable business model around this that reduces waste um, in the city, in the greater metropolitan area, um, uh, and of course uh, helps our environment as well. So I commend the motion. Thank you, Councillor Sims. I have Councillor Abraham today and then Councillor Kerr. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I've got some exciting news for Councillor Sims. We here in Adelaide have our own loop. Um, so I think uh, Councillor Sims and I uh, need to uh, uh, go to um, go to Loop, uh, pay him a visit. Um, I know that they are champions when it comes to circular economy. I also have more exciting news for you. Um, uh, I am familiar with the uh, Milkman model. Uh, back in Iran, where I grew up, uh, we used we used the model. It was uh, it was something that was uh, that was the norm, and uh, and I uh, commend Councillor uh, uh, Sims for bringing this uh, motion to the chamber. Councillor Kerr. Um, first a question, Lord Mayor, uh, to the administration. The comment there uh, below the motion is um, that uh, administration is currently developing the waste and recycling management strategy. Um, and then it says, uh, which will incorporate a review. Uh, this review will also consider zero waste platforms. Um, is that uh, saying that that review is consequent on this motion being passed or that is happening anyway? So, in your opinion, is this motion redundant? CEO? Through Lord Mayor, certainly we would incorporate the concept within our strategic thinking. I don't believe it's fair to say that the, the motion would be redundant. Um, it would be complementary in my view. So did, did this, you're, you're saying this is already being looked into in this in this review? Through Lord Mayor, as are a range of, of matters, this is really just going to provide greater focus on, the, on, on including it in the review. Okay. Um, can I ask that, uh, given 
given that uh, these schemes um, on the surface can sound appealing, uh, but they may in fact uh, involve a cost. In fact, they may involve a, a positive uh, energy cost. What you're looking at uh, potentially is uh, third, fourth and fifth parties, as opposed to the existing existing run of recycling collection, uh, you're looking at additional people who will go around in vehicles uh, collecting individual objects which then have to be repurposed. Now this is a potentially very cumbersome process. Um, given that this sort of uh, additional uh, procedure can involve uh, not only a financial cost but can involve a net carbon cost, uh, will the administration at least undertake to address that element uh, when providing their report on this uh, on this proposal. See you. Through you, Lord Mayor. Yes, we'll certainly take that on board and provide it so we have a complete and informed position. Yep, so you undertake to provide an, uh, uh, whatever assessment you are capable of um, at that level of the uh, additional financial cost, it, it, especially considering if we are considering subsidising such a scheme, what the additional financial cost would be, and what the additional carbon cost, would be, energy cost would be in such an additional scheme. Yes, yes. Great, thanks. Thank you, members. If not, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Thanks, everybody, for their comments. Um, look, uh, in response to uh, Councillor Abrahimzadeh's point about the loop in Adelaide, um, yes, I, I um, am aware that there is an organisation. They, my understanding is they're more of an advocacy organisation rather than a service delivery organisation. Um, and so this, mo uh, this motion, if passed, would give us the opportunity to bring this kind of a, a business model to Adelaide. Um, and I'm not aware of uh, any city in the country that has uh, a scheme such as this in place. Um, as I said before, it has operated in uh, cities around the world, Paris, Brooklyn, New York, um, but I'm not familiar with any Australian cities that have something like this in place. So it could be a really exciting point of difference for Adelaide. And as Councillor Hyde has said, really cement our place as a leader in not only recycling, but reuse. Um, and uh, we know, of course, that we need to move towards zero waste if we're going to protect our environment and to respond to the climate emergency. So I uh, encourage members to support this. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, we go to 11.6, Councillor Sims, motion on notice, artificial turf on verges. Thank you, Lord Mayor. People will be getting sick of hearing the sound of my voice tonight. Lord Mayor, if that's possible, um, I, uh, I move that Council sets a policy position to prohibit the use of artificial turf on verges and seek a seconder. So, Councillor Donovan, thank you. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Well, just two weeks ago, we declared a climate emergency. And so it is incumbent on us to do all that we can to reduce emissions and to reduce the effects of climate change in our city. And Lord Mayor, fake grass is something that has really adverse environmental consequences. It does nothing to promote biodiversity. In fact, it hinders it. Fake grass can destroy microorganisms in the soil under the grass, which harm surrounding plants. It contributes to the heat island effect, and we know that fake grass is hotter than asphalt and um, many other surfaces. It ends up in landfill. Fake grass contributes to plastic waste at a time when we're trying to reduce our waste in the city. Now, I understand, according to administration's comments, that artificial turf is not formally considered for council verges. However, it is in use and uh, I emailed some photos of it in use here in the City of Adelaide to elected members uh, yesterday morning. I looked at Council's existing nature strip application and, and one of the problems is it doesn't actually provide guidance to uh, the community around what constitutes appropriate turf. It just says, tick a box, do you want turf or do you want plants? Um, and uh, there's no clarity provided. And so on that basis, I don't blame residents who may be using artificial turf, perhaps on the mistaken belief that it's compliant with um, council standard. But this really does uh, clarify that. It, it means that we have a clear policy position and um, it brings us into line with other councils across the state that are also looking at this. So Lord Mayor, I think it is time for us to turf the artificial turf and to do what we can to reduce waste in our city and reduce the heat island effect. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Donovan. 
Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, only to add to uh, Councillor Sims' comments that um, in addition to reducing the heat island effect, it does also contribute negatively to stormwater management. And that is one of the other areas in which we are aiming to uh, reduce our urban climate is by enhancing any kind of surface material that will support greater water absorption and, uh, and therefore better stormwater management. So I think it's a sensible suggestion. Thank you, Councillor Donald. Councillor Hyde. Oh, sorry, it must be Councillor Kouros was a question. Sorry, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I just have a question in regards to uh, the motion. It says uh, prohibit the use of artificial turf on verges, although I agree with uh, the intent of uh, the motion. Um, I'm just wondering how would this work with people who currently have got artificial turf out there on the verges and who with every intent were doing the right thing because of the drought or something like that and they wanted it to look pretty out there and do they have to remove it straight away if this motion gets passed? See you. Through Lord Mayor, I would have taken that to be a, um, a future statement. So anyone looking to install um, turf, I think that's what the councillor is looking for. So it would be from this time forward. forward. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I have Councillor Kerr. Oh, sorry. Oh, I, you have satisfied Councillor Kerr, sorry. Uh, I'd like just to be uh, to be clarified, I'm a bit confused. What um, verges, so question to administration, what is the extent uh, to which verges, um, if you could say roughly, currently are watered, watered by the City of Adelaide and, uh, and or watered by residents themselves? CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor. That's something we may have to take on notice unless Clinton, you can help us. No, we could we'll, we'll seek to provide you that information. In Look, uh, some guidance in some shape or form would be very useful be, um, because I'm going to fall on either side of this depending on uh, a rough understanding. I, mean, what, uh, I, I, I was on that, uh, the understanding that most verges uh, are watered by the City of Adelaide that it is not a cost to the resident. But if, if I'm wrong... CEO? Um, yeah, through Lord Mayor, I think it's a mixture between private watering and council watering. Does anyone have any idea what a rough percentage would be? Is it, is it most... Uh, well, it is important, Rob. Um, I can, I can we're, we're considering I, the reason... The reason I can answer that. that. Do you want me to... Yeah. yeah. Centre Road... On your indulgence. Centre Road plantings are generally watered by the City Council. Uh, verges are something that uh, are freely put in by the City Council. Um, the watering system is, um, is partially put in by the City Council and all verges are watered by the uh, householder. Okay, thank you. Um, I was going to speak uh, completely in favour of this motion. Um, I was under the impression the vast bulk of verges were actually uh, paid, watered, paid for by the City of Adelaide. Um, you know, and I had some statistics here, and I guess the, the number of those statistics is that the actual, the use of water in the City of Adelaide uh, on, on uh, parks and squares, streetscapes and squares, is extremely minimal relative to the state, the, the uh, use of water in the state. Uh, we're looking at point, point zero zero one five percent uh, of the state water consumption is used by the City of Adelaide in watering uh, streetscapes and squares. Um, I do think uh, there is a problem here because we are looking at an additional impost. Uh, there are maybe those residents uh, who, you know, um, it's difficult for them to set up watering on verges. Uh, this may be something that is, is, is just makes life easier for them. Um, so, I'm wondering. Okay, an, an amendment. Um, if we uh, on the end of on the end of the, the, the final sentence, uh, unless unless um, uh, exceptional uh, or pecuniary circumstances warrant. Um, I think, no, that's not going to. That's not going to happen. No, I, you, 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 you get my thinking here. So let's try. I'll stop there and let the Chamber reflect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Kerr. I've got Councillor Moran. Yes, I wasn't going to speak, but once again, Councillor Kerr has forced me to rise to my feet. I've never heard anything like it. Um, what happens when you apply for your verge? You have a choice. 
You can have uh, ground rubble, which is actually quite attractive and a, a sandy colour. That's if you don't wish to water your verge. Uh, there are also a selection of uh, water, um, what's the word, water-wise plants for people that don't want to have a lawn. Um, and then there's, of course, lawn, and there might be a couple of others. Um, this is an area I know quite well because I actually moved the motion that brought artificial turf in um, and we did all the walkways along uh, King William Street with artificial turf and North Terrace, uh, middle of the thing. That was, to, um, was in the drought, as Helen put out today, and it was also that it reduced the um, op health and safety of our gardeners having to work in the middle. Uh, because in those days we tended to plant really water-rich plants like roses and things like that. What we've done now is use uh, attractive stonework and uh, desert plants which have the same. So the, the artificial turf was quite a good idea back in the day and it is actually quite pervious to water. Um, but uh, it has been massively outdated by much better um, landscape gardening techniques that don't involve our um, gardeners um, spending too much time with the roads. I have seen a few people with artificial lawn in their verges, but as this only seeks to um, to go, you know, into the future rather than prohibit blank and take that out, I think it's it's quite a bit, it's a tacky look now. It was never popular even when I suggested it. I think on the front page of the paper, you know, plastic moran or something. You know. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad to see that we really put a line under it and we don't encourage it anymore. <laughs> Thank you, councillors. If not, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. <laughs> um, thank, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, look, uh, just to respond to some of the um, comments that have been made, as part of my preparation for this motion, I went through the exercise of filling out the form on the Council website, um, which is uh, relating to nature strips. Um, and uh, it asks you to fill out a few boxes. You indicate whether you're going to have turf or lawn. Um, it indicates, um, you, you have to indicate what kind of irrigation system you're going to have in place. And it also uh, makes it very clear to you that you have to take responsibility for looking after the, the verge yourself and makes it clear that council has a right to uh, remove verges if they're unsightly or if there are issues. Um, so that's uh, the current state of play. As a result of this uh, amendment, the form would include an addition that says we don't accept artificial turf. I would hope that in instances where artificial turf is being used, administration, if they become aware of this, would at least talk to uh, the residents in question and make them aware of some of the alternatives that are available because um, they are uh, cheap, affordable options uh, that use very little water um, and uh, that don't contribute to the uh, heat island effect in our city. So there are lots of green alternatives. We don't have to be um, laying down plastic lawn in um, a city like Adelaide, one of the driest cities uh, in the driest continent on earth to be having plastic on our uh, streets is uh, not a good uh, idea, Lord Mayor. Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to item 11.7, Councillor Martin, North Adelaide on Street Parking. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, do you want a second? Thank you. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, the issue of parking in North Adelaide has been on the agenda since um, motor cars began, I think, and uh, Councillor Moran, I think, has been uh, dealing with those issues for uh, decades. Um, and uh, finally, this year, uh, we managed to get some changes through the Chamber. I thank you for your part in facilitating that. If you had not facilitated uh, the motion in council, it would not happen. And I thank the Deputy Lord Mayor also. And I remember sitting with him drafting the motion for the changes, um, and I'm grateful uh, for his contribution. But I have to say that the, uh, the plan um, that actually has developed is not the one that I thought it would be. Um, I, th I thought there were going to be um, a, uh, a raft of changes that would first be run past uh, councillors, particularly uh, the local councillors on a fine grain so that we street by street looked at the problems and were able to flag any issues that didn't happen. And also there's a lot of angst, uh, I've mentioned this before among local residents, um, because the motion of council, which was intended 
uh, at least I intended, uh, would allow for permits to be issued to all residents, uh, have only been issued to residents living in Torrens title properties. Anyone in a townhouse or an apartment that is on a strata title has been excluded. And so we have a situation where there's a disparity between the passes. But look, um, uh, none of that um, uh, really um, detracts from some of the issues that have created, been created for other people, including uh, nurses. Um, and they believe that they have been put at risk by the changes that have gone through this council. Um, in fact, uh, the risk they believe is so severe that uh, on the urging of nurses, Calvary Hospital has now issued personal alarms to all staff finishing work late at night um, so that they can press a buzzer um, and hopefully someone will hear uh, that they're being attacked or that they need uh, some assistance. Um, yesterday, uh, Councillor Moran and I spoke with uh, a number of nurses and the motion here before the council um, represents um, a summation of the broader picture, but specifically they raised issues uh, with us that they would like addressed. And uh, look, I am told that nurses are watching this, uh, God help them, this uh, broadcast of this council meeting with some interest. And Libby Green, who as you know, has created a Facebook page, um, is hanging on our words to make a, a Facebook post on what the outcome is. But uh, what they want to know is whether we can arrange some sort of permits, whether we can involve the management of the hospitals in uh, dealing with their problems, and whether there's something we can do in relation to the council bus in ferrying nurses uh, to and from parking locations. They also want to know what we can do about addressing, may I have a minute, Lord Mayor? Thank you. What we can do uh, to address uh, the issue of parking for um, shift workers, nursing staff at the Women's and uh, Children Hospital, who uh, they say um, uh, isn't functioning properly. In fact, the outcome that council negotiated with the hospital with a consultant has now lapsed and that nurses are not able to park their vehicles close to the hospital. Um, now, I know in the case of Libby Green, um, she finishes work at 10 and now, because of our parking changes, walks through the parklands at night to her car at Hackney. This is 10, 10.30 at night. Now, um, these uh, women and men, but mainly women, are anxious that we find a solution for them, one that doesn't wait until the workshop, which is scheduled for next week, but one that starts tonight with a view to us finding a solution for them in the next few weeks. Um, there are other parties who are waiting, and if I can just finish by saying, um, uh, I have been told by the nurses that Suburban Taxis is waiting uh, to offer free shuttle services to any parking area that we nominate, but it needs to happen quickly in order to give those nurses some comfort. And I do ask members to support this. Thank you. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Ah, uh, yes. Very briefly, look, um, as I'll just reiterate that the plan that's uh, come to North Adelaide now is only partially the plan that we, uh, that the local councillors um, anticipated. And uh, that's one of the reasons I stopped it being implemented before the last election when we were going into caretaker mode because I knew there'd be so many people unhappy and we couldn't change uh, the parking plan swiftly because of the caretaker mode. Uh, and I, so I wanted at the beginning of the council, and not just so we faced an angry mob at the election, but also that we could swiftly change things that we'd made mistakes. So this is what we're trying to do. Um, this links in with the parent permits that um, the council resolved to look at for the women's and children's. Um, the nurses need us to, to help now, and because we have um, successfully got rid of most of the park and rides, we have more room on our streets. Um, so we can we can help here. Phil and I learned quite a lot meeting the nurses. We'd always imagined it was the night staff, but it's not, it's the evening staff. We also learned um, that um, 
as against us. We also learned that the solution we put in place at the Women's and Children's Hospital car park, which worked very well, which was getting administrative staff out, uh, getting the afternoon staff to park, park in Wincanton Parade, has been changed and now it's just completely clogged and nobody can get into it, parents, nurses or anything. The administrations of these hospitals let their nurses down in uh, that the Women's and Children's has repeatedly asked for two more levels on its car park, which it desperately needs. Uh, of course, the Memorial Hospital sold the car park to the Women's and Children's, so therefore didn't give any of their nurses a chance to park there then. Um, Calvary has built um, a whole row of um, privately owned residences on the place that they were supposed to build their car park. So the hospitals, in my opinion, have totally let down their nurses and then turned around to the city council and said, well, make, make car parking spaces. We've been pretty good if anybody wants to criticise us too much. Basically, we turn a blind eye to Calvary parking in our, um, in our golf course car park. But this is just not good enough. Now, the final straw has been the tightening up of our um, on-street parking, which, as both Phil and I told the nurses, will not be undone. We will not go back to the state of play where we have unlimited um, areas in our suburbs. We need to tighten the parking, um, but then we need to help the nurses. It's not rocket science. Both Two of these hospitals don't have huge night staff. They're not an emergency ward hospital. Uh, the Women's and Children's is staffed um, completely. Uh, you might notice we're just talking about North Adelaide hospitals now. Obviously, when we bring parking changes in to other parts of the city, we'll have to look at Ashford and New Calvary and so forth. But I think that uh, the New Calvary has a, a, a good car park. So just because the hospital has let down the nurses, and I share the anger, just so you think, anger with saying, look, it's not our job to provide private businesses with on-street car parks. No, it's not. But these are nurses, they're ship workers, their hospitals have let them down and sold off their car parking. So a simple override permit system or something, as we suggested with the parents, we're not talking about a lot of nurses. Strangways Terrace, the parkland side next to the golf course, the golfers are all gone by then. We could put, as per McKinnon Parade, some parking there. We can do it, but the, the, I urge the administration this time to listen to the people that are intimately, have, have intimate knowledge of the parking situations in our area. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I will uh, support this motion, but I recognise our administration in a very difficult situation here um, because ultimately this is the responsibility, I believe, of uh, the hospital. It's an industrial obligation um, that they have to look out, look out for the safety of their workers and to ensure that uh, appropriate measures are put in place. That said, I'm happy to support this review. I understand elements of the um, on-street parking trial have not worked uh, as planned. Um, I recognise there's lots of work done on that. I know that the Deputy Lord Mayor was very much involved in uh, getting that off the ground, um, but there's work to be done to uh, make some changes. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, this is a, a vexing issue. Look, and I do agree with Councillor Moran and Councillor Sims with regards to what is the responsibility of this council. I know that the nurses have unions that represent them, but I also know that hospitality businesses that are operating also late at nights in those areas with staff, they have the same problem. They just don't have as loud of a voice. So there is some significant concerns with this, but this is always an issue. Every time we've shifted parking, be it in the East End, be it in the West End, be it in North Adelaide, there's always a level of discomfort and disgruntledness with both pays and workers in the area because it is it will never please everyone. I'm not going to be supporting this tonight, and the reason I'm not supporting it tonight is because we have a workshop on this, and I want to be able to get a full picture from our administration. We've gone through a tough trial. It's been a very challenging trial. We did take into account um, with Councillor Martin and Councillor Moran's concerns um, at the last motion that was supported or the recommendation that was supported to the chamber um, and we did listen to the local councillors that understand the area but even with the local councillors it's quite challenging to be able to put your finger on a pulse and be able to determine every single issue that will arise as a result of a shift to parking so look we've had to listen to this but i don't want to be patching this up by bringing motions in that are going to solve the Calvary issue, then we're going to bring another motion to solve the traders issue, then another motion to solve the resident issue, and before you know it, we're back to square one again. 
So I think it's really important that we look at the feedback from the administration, take the workshop on board, which is on the 17th of September, um, Tuesday next week, um, and be able to get a holistic process or a holistic report on everything that's occurred in the last few months with regards to this process, the trial, tribulation, listen to the local <coughs> councillors, listen to the feedback that's been received, and from there be able to make an informed decision, um, hopefully with a solid recommendation from council on how we can move forward. I don't think there is ever going to be an opportunity where everyone's going to be happy. I don't think there'll ever be a world where every um, strata apartment in North Adelaide is going to get a permit, uh, similar to how in the south or anywhere else in the city will be able to do that. I just don't think we'll be able to accommodate that as a council. And this is potentially where our planning rules may need to shift uh, or we need to look at ways to make sure we can force the availability of parking spaces when buildings are being developed, if that is going to be a problem for us in the future. Uh, but look, um, I get where this is going, but this is simply just trying to patch up the issue uh, as um, those concerns arise. I think it's important we take all the feedback on board, including that of, of the councillors that are engaged with the Nurses' Union and other residents and businesses, and be able to bring all that to, um, to a workshop first before we make a decision on one. So I'd ask members to not support this, um, and hopefully on the 17th of September we'll get some clarity on what the way forward will look like. Councillor Hyde. Just a quick question before we start the clock, um, Lord Mayor. Um, were, was administration invited to these talks that were held with nurses and, and other stakeholders? See ya. Claire, thanks. Well, I wasn't through the Lord Mayor. Um, however, we have been working closely with hospitals in North Adelaide as well as schools in North Adelaide, and we were going to share what we had learned um, next Tuesday night. Yeah, so, but you weren't invited to this specific meeting? I personally wasn't. I don't know if my staff were. Um, I don't think so. It doesn't sound like. No, they definitely were not invited to that. Thank not you for invited. clarifying, Councillor Moran. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, and therein lies, you can start the clock now, and, and therein lies one of the issues with this process. Um, uh, I am seriously losing patience um, with this, um, and uh, my trust my trust in, in, in the ability of some councillors to advocate on this issue has been, has been almost irreparably eroded. This is the third motion in two meetings that we've had on North Adelaide parking. Um, this parking reform, uh, is really at risk of becoming a Frankenstein's monster. Um, and it seems that everyone, everyone um, is unhappy with it uh, to some degree. Um, but look, I've never been one to really uh, take to homework, but on this issue I did. And my homework has told me, my research has told me that this has been an issue as council mindset for a very, very long time, of course. Um, we had a motion from Council Moran, 14th of February, 2017. Then we had a committee workshop, 20th of June, 2017. Another committee workshop in July, 2017. And another one in November of that year. There was a council report prepared on, in December, 2017, before stakeholder engagement starts um, on the 21st of December, 2017. Another report then, 27th of March, um, uh, 2018, committee workshop, 3rd of April, council report, July 2018, another committee workshop in August, another report in August, um, uh, and that's uh, that's before this term even began. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, and of course, yes, I wasn't there, but my research has also told me that um, North Adelaide councillors, uh, in particular Councillor Martin, had a significant amount of input into this process over that time. Um, and of course, uh, as well, I'm reminded, and I was here for this one, um, when these changes actually came to Council on the 12th of March 2019, um, it was a variation moved by Councillor Martin that varied the administration's recommendations. And so when we talk about trust being eroded, um, this motion before us talks to uh, administration's recommendations. It says their recommendations. Well, really, all of their parking changes. These aren't administration's parking changes at all. These are changes that have been brought about 
Um, my council is based in North Adelaide. Um, and so for them to come now uh, and, uh, and, and say that these, are, that these are someone else's changes, that all the furor that's been caused by this is not their fault, and it's actually the council administration's, well, I would just say that is downright disingenuous. Um, uh, and of course, as well, as well, Lord, Lord, Mayor, Lord Mayor, I do object to that. This is, as this well, is a personal attack, and the issue is about nurse safety, not about what I said or did or what the administration did. It's not an attack, Lord Mayor, it's, it's a fact. It's a cheap little game he's playing. These are facts. Facts, Lord Mayor, and facts which, 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 which I will have to, I'm going to seek an extension because some of this needs to be said. Um, uh, because members, when it came to when it came to council on the 12th of March, um, uh, my research also shows me that. Uh, members, I have two minutes, please. Two. Yep, two. It's a complicated issue, as you said, Councillor Martin. That's what you're the point. I am arguing the point. I am arguing the point, Councillor Rand. I'm telling you why I have no trust. Councillors, please. Councillor Hyde has the uh, of floor. Of course, Councillor Martin said, I've worked on this parking strategy, and this is a quote, uh, for the best part of three years. Uh, oh, sorry, this is uh, this is Councillor Baran, which seconded this motion. Worked on this for the best part of three years. This is taking cars out of North Adelaide, taking the commuter parker out of North Adelaide to give more room for our residents. I want all the unlimited areas to be limited. I deserve to have my name on this motion. And, and so then we turn around and then actually after the fact, after we uh, uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater, then we want to start consulting stakeholders. Then we want to start consulting hospitals, nurses, their unions, businesses, and what have you. Um, uh, this is this is a, a clear example of shooting first and asking questions later. And, and it goes to show what happens when you, when you absolutely bastardize a process. Um, uh, the administration has put in place that we should be allowing more to yeah. Look, Look, Lord Mayor, if you don't stop this, I'm going to walk out. Seriously. Um, and of course, of course, of course, adding to that, of course, adding to that. And when we talk about administration, Councillor Hyde, have we finished? Because you are talking to the motion. Uh, I am talking to the motion. Councillor Hyde, I'm outlining, have you I'm outlining why I don't think councillors should be put. I think we've heard you. Have, have you? Yeah. Have you no, finished? Put up with that abuse anymore. No, no, no. Talk about a glass drawer. Oh, the best was yet to come, but um, if, <laughs> um, actually, uh, given that the mover of the motion and the seconder of the motion have left the room, I will remove lapses. the motion. The motion lapses. Excellent. We will now go. Thank you, councillors. We will now go to item eleven point eight. Oh, sorry, members. I've been told we still have to vote on it, even though they've left the room. I move the motion. Can I speak to it? Sorry, OK. I've been told councillors can still speak to it. I have Councillor Connell and Councillor Gross. Um, uh, looking at this, I mean, obviously, this is my uh, uh, this whole situation with the parking is, has been a major problem. But look, put that aside because this doesn't help the people that we're really asking to, to uh, who need our assistance and who obviously weren't considered well enough in the process, which is quite obvious. So if we if we take it a little bit step back and say, rather than trying to create extra permits and things like that in the short term, which is really a lot of work, why can't we undo some and just put temporary stuff up? Because obviously this wasn't an issue before. Oh, there was issues, but you know, I mean, but then people were able to work around it. Are we able to just look at the situation, just put up some temporary part, uh, signs, etc., and then uh, uh, diffuse that? Um, to I mean, and the people of North Adelaide will have to appreciate that too, because we are talking about people's safety and things like that. And any convenience is certainly worth a, a little something, because if it, if it prevents an injury or prevents something uh, a terrible happening, then that's a way. Then at least we put that aside. And then we can then we can have our game uh, of about how we should be doing this because it is a problem. Adelaide was designed uh, for you know, carriages and things like that, and a lot of those those little buildings are gone. Um, and obviously, it's become a, a large city with large businesses and things like that, rather than a residential hub. And I think we do need to consider a little bit how we're going to do this because we are a hybrid. And I mean, uh, as private uh, uh, companies, etc. I mean, people uh, go into car, uh, you know, their large parking house and things like that. So we we. None of us are accommodated the way we wish, but in the first instance, if we can just put aside, uh, relieve the problem, then have our workshop, let us revisit this. But it'd be nice 
all stakeholders are involved because it's not just residents, not just ratepayers, because we have people who have come here and use the city and this is the livelihood. And truly, that's that's part of the conversation we should have every time because obviously we're excluding them and we have done this ever increasingly, which means that it makes our city less attractive. It doesn't make it a place to come to work. It may be a place to avoid. And I suppose that's the outcomes of these sorts of uh, decisions, which are only short term anyway, because as some one resident said to me, and if my family wanted to stay longer than four hours, they're going to start looking for places to park their cars. Or if it's a two hour car park, they're going to shift a few times, uh, you know, and, and those sorts of things are the unintended consequences. So I think if we can put that in place, and then let us talk about the rest and let us not worry too much about who really, who really made mistakes, someone's going to screw up, but they really, um, you know, in the endeavour of trying to solve somebody's problem, we just don't know who's. Okay, Councillor Canal, Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I just want to say that um, I have been um, liaising with a lot of the residents and businesses and a lot of the institutions in, in North Adelaide. And I have put it out a survey on my website and directed people there to give me some of their feedback. And it has been really interesting, the feedback that I have been getting. And I really do, in this case with the nurses, I really actually do feel sorry for them that uh, it has been very difficult for them. But in saying that, I know that administration do as well. And I know that the nurses are not disregarded. And I also know, because I've been liaising with administration in regards to the concerns that the Women's and Children's Hospital, the nurses are having, um, and that they're bringing forward um, some um, changes into the workshop on the 17th of September. So I just think this is a little bit premature um, in bringing this motion into chamber today when we actually have, uh, I am understanding that administration have been talking directly with the Women's and Children's Hospital and that gives me peace to know that and faith to know that administration are going to bring something forward that would please the nurses. Would it be possible at the committee meeting where this is going to be brought forward to have a representative of a Women's and Children's Hospital speak in regards to how the nurses are affected and how this could be solved? CEO. Through Lord Mayor, yes, that is possible. Clear? Um, yes, through our discussions, they've indicated they want to actually attend uh, the workshop, so they will be there. Fantastic, because I think it's great that we have um, them there at this meeting rather than a meeting that no councillor attended, no administration staff attended, not even the Lord Mayor to listen to what the nurses have. It's great that we have a representative from the Women's Children's Hospital that can speak exactly to what is required and how we can support them. And it's really on the 17th of September, not far <coughs> away. So I'm not going to support this uh, motion because I have faith that we're going to get to a resolute on this matter anyway. Members, I will, if there's no further speaking, I'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? <laughs> that fails. Members, uh, Councillor Martin is not in the room, so we will go to 11.9, uh, Councillor Knoll. This motion, and I seek a second. <coughs> Sorry, Councillor Abraham's in it. Okay. Anyway. As a second. Um, so, uh, I present this, uh, this motion to uh, Councillor, if I can ask you, just put your microphone on, please. Oh, good idea. Um, I present this motion to the uh, to the chamber, and this is, comes out of um, uh, a few uh, interactions I've had. Unfortunately, one uh, with the like people like in County Youth, etc., who are who are working on on Hindley Street, and uh, who are uh, you know helping uh, support the police and also support the the you know the patrons of the of the precinct. And I think uh, moving forward from from that uh, during that evening where we had uh, where they. Uh, Councillor Abraham today and myself went around with quite a number of uh, politicians from both sides of the state parliament, and they showed us how, how the precinct operated, how they how they assisted, and, and how they were able to influence uh, the the precinct. And we went past, uh, and one of the the, the standout uh, sort of uh, places was the fact that there are now eight shisha bars uh, in in the precinct, and uh, that this was a concern for them, simply partially because. Uh, there was issues with the way uh, they, they uh, compl with their failure to comply uh, with their requirements of the licenses, etc. But also with the actual shisha uh, smoke itself, because the way it was done and it's open in the, and it's also open to the footpaths, etc. Uh, it, it did create a, a, a health hazard 
Um, and it was it's a bit understated because people have, have a consideration that uh, a sisha smoke, because it's in water, has things removed, when truly that's not the case. It only partially removes things. Um, and it is it is still as toxic as cigarettes and it can even be more so because of uh, the other sorts of ingredients they do to sweeten it and all the rest of it. So we looked at that and I thought, well, it's, it would be uh, worthwhile to present, uh, and that's why it has the two parts. One is in the, uh, it is about the compliance aspect and that is which now uh, uh, the administration is looking at a lot stronger to ensure that they are complying with the requirements set upon their licenses so that they are uh, enhancing the, the precinct, not detracting. Part of the problem is that in, in Harley Street, to make sure that uh, you know the patrons and that uh, are well looked after, that there is an, an open spaces and, and people are able to move around freely, uh, you need to make sure that uh, you know all of the all of the uh, you know stakeholders there and all of the businesses are looking after the community and after looking at the patrons and things like that. So you, that's a component. That with all of our quick wins that we're looking at, uh, are trying to put in for them to enable them to look after the street and really improve uh, the accessibility, the movement, and also just the, the amenity of the place, so that it is a more appealing, more uh, you know, uh, uh, positive environment. And then we now look at the actual shisha smoke itself, and uh, and it, it became quite apparent is that you have these uh, uh, you know places where they're able to smoke outside. Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, there are smoke outside, uh, but what the, my main concern with that is that I'm, I'm not against people smoking and that's all cool, but the problem we do have is that those people who are inadvertently just walking up and down the street who do not wish to be interact with the smoke uh, do so. And that is a problem because we talk about the, uh, the issues of passive smoking and in that uh, one of the little anecdotal things are that an hour sitting next to someone who's doing has shisha smoke, yeah, it's hard to say. Accent. But <laughs> but uh, it's equivalent to sort of 20 cigarettes. And so we think about that just as someone sitting next to them, and it is 100 to 200 times more potent than a cigarette. Uh, uh, so you think about that, and uh, this is done through uh, research. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, just, I'm, running out of t I'm running out of councils to look at. <laughs> but. But the bottom line is this, is that it's, it's incumbent upon us to see if, for those people who don't want to interact with this smoke, how can we look after them? And that's why the second component is about us working together with state government, because in the health authorities, and I've had the correspondence from, you know, cancer councils, etc., to work towards uh, minimising that risk. So, I yeah. put it to you. Actually, Councillor Kanan was supposed to address the presiding member, um, yes, rather correct. than Councillor Hyde. <laughs> Councillor <laughs> Abraham Zidane. Um, just very quickly, Lord Mayor, I commend Councillor Connell for bringing this motion in. There, uh, some of us might remember there was a time where uh, uh, um, certain brands were uh, advertised that um, you know a, a GP or a doctor uh, preferred to smoke a certain brand, and, and it was uh, it was cool to do that. But uh, I commend Councillor Connell for bringing this motion to the chamber and uh, uh, for uh, bringing us into the 21st century and uh, putting smoking aside and putting that uh, uh, um, you know, a, a horrible um, uh, habit like that behind us. Thank you. Members, anybody else like to speak? If not, I'll go back to the mover. Councillor Knob, sum up. Um, well, I just present to the members. I think uh, this is adds a little bit more one uh, for the stakeholders within that, in the precinct and the businesses who have been looking at uh, to, uh, to us for uh, for assistance and uh, some some positive you know enforcement. And the other is for the community that we protect those that that wish uh, to have their their rights and their freedoms also protected. Thank you, members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to 11.10. Councillor Donovan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I submit the motion and seek a second uh, Yes, I should draw attention oh, to a slight variation, uh, which is simply to remove the words highlighted in red as part of the Adelaide Design Manual. So just to clarify, point three is requests administration prepare a detailed walking strategy, including a peer review of walking strategies of other cities, for example, Melbourne and Sydney, to improve Adelaide's walkability and livability. Thank you, Councillor. I look for a seconder. Thank you. Oh. Councillor, oh, Councillor Sims. 
Thank you, Lord Mayor. So I think this is uh, fairly self-explanatory as identified in the motion. We recently had some interesting data received from Walking SA, which pointed to the fact that the City of Adelaide uh, currently, unfortunately, in uh, recent times, has one in five of the pedestrian crashes occurs within our boundaries, which is in some ways unsurprising because, of course, we have such a high volume of, uh, of foot traffic through the city, but for that reason it's so important that we do consider a walking strategy. As noted within the motion, um, we have a, the ideal opportunity at this present point given we are currently underway um, with both the city access strategy, which is in uh, collaboration with the state government, as well as our own movement and transport strategy. So now is the perfect time. This is something that needs to be considered um, both independently and within this body of work, independently because traditionally, unfortunately, uh, walking has not been, and pedestrians have not been prioritised. Uh, legacy thinking is to is to to look to the dominant um, form of uh, of transport, which is considered to be the car, considered to be our roads. However, in actual fact. In most cities, and certainly the same is true for the city of Adelaide, roughly two thirds of trips occur by pedestrians. And most of us do have the opportunity to be a pedestrian, first and foremost, and then we utilize all of our other uh, forms of transport. So this is simply to uh, ensure that pedestrians are highly prioritized, both in terms of their safety. And interestingly, this is also um, uh, an economic argument in the sense that um, a lot of the studies that have been put out from around the world, for example, uh, one recent in Auckland demonstrated that if pedestrians are um, held up at, uh, at crossings unnecessarily, it can severely negatively impact on the local economy. And there was one, one uh, little study that demonstrated that a, uh, a delay at a pedestrian crossing, a single pedestrian crossing in Auckland, led to a $2.2 million loss to the local economy. And that's both a combination of the productivity of the workers, but also local retail spend decreases. Because of course, if people run out of time, then they take their business elsewhere and are more likely to shop in another area. So it's both a, a health and safety priority, but it also has a strong economic argument to ensure that we are prioritising our most dominant form of transport. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I really want to commend Councillor Donovan for putting this forward. I know she's a big advocate for um, walking and cycling and active transport in our city. Um, it's an interest for me also, as members may know, I don't own a motor vehicle, um, so I'm very interested in the uh, city experience as a pedestrian. Um, and one of the things that often strikes me about our city streets is that um, cars really do dominate. And I think we often forget that our streets belong to cars. Uh, I think we often forget that our streets belong to people, not cars, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, and uh, we do put a huge focus on the car in Adelaide. And so anything that redresses that balance, I think, is, is really worth us looking at. Um, and so having a strategy like this in place, I think, really makes good sense. It's good for our environment. It's also um, really good uh, for um, our uh, economy as well. And as Councillor Donovan has indicated, there are lots of benefits that potentially flow from that. So I really support this motion and, and uh, I encourage everybody to get behind it. Members, Councillor Hyde. Uh, just quickly, I want to commend and thank Councillor Donovan for bringing this um, uh, to, the, to the chamber to put on our radar as we're considering broadly um, the city access strategy uh, uh, what have you or as we will be considering it um, uh, and, and in just saying I will say that walking is um, almost a lost art form among, among many and you know they say that uh, sitting is the new smoking um, so of course we should be encouraging our, our, our ratepayers and members of the public and our visitors to be as active as possible um, uh, of course I've taken uh, and I would recommend this reading to the chamber um, the art of walking uh, written by Henry David Thoreau um, which talks about transcendentalism in walking uh, and other such high-flying ideas but it does really contribute to the well-being um, uh, and of course that's something that Councillor uh, Donovan um, uh, uh, brings to our attention as well constantly health and well-being in the city of Adelaide um, and walking is a massive part of that so I can make a motion to everyone here. Thank you. Councillor Cannon. Uh, yes I, I too uh, appreciate this motion uh, and, it, and it is a very fundamental to making Adelaide a much more attractive place and in, enabling people and also uh, our infrastructure to uh, reflect how we w wish people to now move around the city and it is a, a very much a health aspect because if we're able to make the accessibility 
and then dovetail that in getting around the city by whatever mode you wish but in a, a lot around that is that make the city walkable which does uh, enhance you know the, the value of the city but also uh, the ease of which people can use the city and if we can use that health aspect combined uh, you know with with that uh, being able to do what you want to do and in the way you wish uh, that obviously enhances you know the living the living in the city and makes that now a much more viable option members um, I'd also uh, support Councillor Donovan on the walking strategy. I remember when we did a mapping exercise several years ago about the ant trails, just following where the movement was through the city, which led to the pedestrianisation of Lee Street as a splash project and then Peel Street. And of course, it's also part of the movement strategy around Hindley Street uh, with the um, trials of Bank and Rosina that will happen to help movement through the city. So um, I do thank you for bringing this in. I think it's really timely. I think it's really needed. And I think it will play a good part of our city access strategy. Um, if I'll hand over to you to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. It's great to have the support of everyone in the chamber and uh, because it is such an important uh, issue, both from the health and safety, also as, as discussed from the economic uh, position. So um, yes, I, I look forward to moving forward on this, on this motion. Members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to item 12 on the agenda, which is motions without notice. Councillor Hyde. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, apologies, I didn't circulate this ahead of time, um, but I would like to move a motion uh, if uh, governments are ready to. Yes, they are. Um, uh, that council uh, abolishes dinners and alcohol after meetings and from council chambers in a cost cutting measure exercise. Go slower. Abolishes uh, dinner and alcohol after meetings and from councillor chambers. Including the members lounge. In a cost cutting measure. To save ratepayer funds. And sorry, that's one uh, and there is a two. Uh, two, uh, 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 that council use micro tender processes to provide an open meal uh, between the hours of 5 and 6 p.m. Point of order, Lord Mayor, how is this a motion so, without notice? Ex exactly. It Sorry, like I'm just taking advice, measure. Councillor uh, Sims, if you would mind just a moment. So I'm is, going to ask for this motion to be put on notice. On notice. My I, advice is that it is to be put on notice, and I'm happy to take it in next two weeks' agenda. Could I just ask the reason? I don't think there are any financial implications other than saving money. Three, Lord Mayor, matters like this really should be on the public agenda and the public should know that they're going to be debated before they are considered. That is the primary reason. But at the end of the day, it's a decision of the Lord Mayor. Is that the decision of the Lord Mayor? I would argue. Just one moment because I'm just going to find something to stand So just in reference to the standing orders, I'll ask that this goes on notice and uh, that we'll debate it next week in full with comment from the administration. Certainly. Thank you. Members, are there any other motions without notice? No, if, that, if not, um, we'll close the meeting. Thank you, members.